I recently finished converting my van into a little camper, which is now my new home. I've been traveling for the past week around Europe. The other day I left England, I packed up the van with everything I would need to travel for the foreseeable future and go on the biggest road trip of my life. I've got a super early tunnel crossing from England into France tomorrow. So I've got to get up at like three in the morning and then I'll be driving to my first destination. Let's go on the biggest road trip of my life. I'm scared. This is gonna be the longest I've ever spent away from a proper brick house. Now this is my home. This is my life now. I'm on the road. This is the freest I will ever be in my life. And it feels scary, but also incredibly exciting. Coffee, cinnamon roll. That's all I need for the 10 hour drive. First stop is gonna be near Basel, where Switzerland meets France and Germany, where the three countries' borders meet. I'm excited. Fresh French air. That was the longest tunnel I've ever been in in my life. I drove for about seven hours through France into Germany where I met up with a good friend where we had some really fun adventures. We were right on the border between Germany, France and Switzerland, so we did quite a lot of walking around the three different countries. Went to the city of Basel for the day, which was really nice. It's a really beautiful city with the river Rhine flowing through it. We also found this really cool wireless phone charger thing next to a bus station. Charge your smartphone. No way. Yes, look! Whoa. That day in Basel, I also learned that not all bananas are yellow. One of the days whilst riding our bikes around the town, we found this chicken of the woods mushroom on a tree. Now these things are edible and they taste amazing, so we couldn't help but take it. It turned into quite a funny day because once we had taken this mushroom, we didn't really know where to put it. So, so it ended up going in the basket of one of our bikes. And so for the rest of the day, whilst riding around the town, it was with us and we got many odd looks from people like looking into the basket thinking, what is that? What is that alien looking thing? Anyway, we eventually got the mushroom home and chopped it up and fried it in breadcrumbs and it was super nice. It actually tastes of chicken, it's mad. It's got the texture of chicken, the slight taste of chicken. It's one of my favorite mushrooms to eat. We decided to take a trip to the Black Forest in Germany. Now the Black Forest is a huge forest. I think it's 6,000 kilometers squared in size. And we wanted to find some mushrooms, not just any old mushrooms. We wanted to find some edible ones so we could take them and then cook them up in the back of the van and have a nice feast. Welcome to the Black Forest. So nice. Just found what we're looking for. Ta da! That's a big, juicy, bulbous one. And there's a baby one there. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. Yay, mushrooms. We 
We only found two mushrooms, so I need to find some more. Otherwise, we're not going to eat very well tonight. Go further. I think we will see them. Yes, stop. Only found two of these penny bun belitus edulis mushrooms, but we went to the supermarket and bought some other things as well, so we actually can have a proper meal. Shallots, garlic, mushrooms, beer. Potatoes are boiling and we're going to attempt to make a creamy sauce. Honey makes everything better. Mm. Chives. Oh, I know what it's also missing. There's the finished meal. All cooked in the back of the van. This is uh, this the second time I've cooked in the back of my van. Taste test. Oh, it's really hot. Mmm. I put too much pepper in, but other than that, it tastes really good. Just finished our meal and eaten all the lovely food. That was so good. Oh, I love foraging mushrooms in the woods. There's nothing better. And hopefully there'll be plenty more of it over the next couple of weeks because it is prime mushroom season now. The next day I left my friend in Germany and began traveling again. I'm leaving Germany and I'm going to Switzerland. To drive on the roads in Switzerland, Slovenia and Austria, you need a vignette, which is one of these little stickers that you stick on the windscreen and it means that you've paid for the roads there. I think you need one for all the big motorway roads. That peels back and then I stick it somewhere. There we go. I am currently quite awkwardly sat in the back of my van in a shopping centre car park waiting to meet a couple of people who I've been speaking to on Instagram. They are currently complete strangers, I don't know them yet, but the other day I thought when I go on this trip round Europe it will be a bit boring if I'm just on my own the whole time and I thought why not ask some of the people on my Instagram and see if anyone is en route see if anybody would be up for meeting up and doing some fun stuff together. I was quite surprised to see how many people replied to my Instagram story. This evening, I'm gonna meet up with a couple of guys. I think they said we're gonna go climbing, like climbing up rocks. But looking at the weather, it's been raining so much recently. So it might be too wet, like the rocks might be too slippery. Hey, good to meet you. So you guys are climbers? Yeah, yeah I climbed on and also uh, spell anchor. What's that? Going into caves. Oh wow. Jeez. You sound more adventurous than me. Maybe more stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think they're brothers, Joel and Jonas. Wow. We're going to the cliffs where they do the climbing. This is where we climb up this. Yeah, well, yeah we'll this try it at your ways. Nice and slippery. Wow, this is the first time I've ever been like cl rock climbing on a proper rock, like not in in an indoor place. I'll give it a go. Oh wow! Yeah. You are told that's an advantage. Yeah, <laughs> you can reach far away. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Even if you fall, you won't go far, uh, far down. So high. <laughs> wow, such a good view. Quite impressive as the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers, guys. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> and it was a lot harder than the other one for you or uh what yeah yeah i harder. could feel my fingers like are they just gonna give up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you feel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. After climbing, I needed to find another place to go camping. I went on the Park for Night app, which is a really neat app, which allows you to find places that you can camp. But I found a nice spot next to a river where I slept last night. Then this morning, I woke up and drove into the town to grab some food and supplies, and then found this little nice spot in the countryside where I've parked up. I've opened up the van to air it out. Today is gonna to be the first day editing in the back of my van. One of the main aims when I was building this van was to make it in such a way that I could edit my YouTube videos off-grid. I, I didn't want to have to go to a campsite to get power or go to get accommodation or an Airbnb to have power. I've got a solar panel on the roof which will be working very well today because it is nice and sunny. It's gonna be the first time I've ever edited a video not at my desk at home. It's like an almond question pasty, liquidy stuff in the middle, which is so good. I realized with a small van, you very quickly make things messy. Fruit. Mmm. Snack. More fruit. I don't know what they said. Solar panel is currently working. And as it charges the battery, I'm going to slowly drain the battery by working. Oh my goodness, it's actually working. My laptop is charging. That's so cool. First day of editing in my van begins. You are an influencer? <laughs> kind of, I make YouTube videos. YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. yeah, you can sleep well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. It's my it's my new home now. Yeah, and you make uh, yeah Tesla stories. Or... Yeah, yeah, stories good. Yeah, and YouTube, it's for yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Did you have have you had a good walk? Yes, uh, it's very nice here. This way, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, bye. bye. Have a good day. It's time for lunch. It might look like I'm making sandwiches for the whole village, but no, this is all for me. One for today, one for tomorrow morning, one for tomorrow lunch. I'm doing everything in bulk. Chiles. Mmm. If you want to keep up to date with my adventures and travels, 
head over to my Instagram because I post more regularly on there, like regular updates and Instagram stories. But for now, I'm going to crack on and keep editing. I'm now 15 days into my European adventure where I've been living out the back of my little van. So far I've had some fun adventures and met up with some great people and the past couple of days I've been camping in Switzerland. I stayed in my van just out from the city of Bern and I also found a nice lake so I could finally take a shower. I found the best thing in the world the other day. This is wilderness wash, multi-purpose outdoor wash. You can use it for body wash, shampoo, dishwasher deterrent, and clothes deterrent. 10 in one mixture of liquid, and it's biodegradable, so it's good for using if you're jumping in places like this. Lots of people ask me, where are you going to wash if you haven't got a shower in your van? Well, that is exactly what I'm going to have to do for the next few months. It's all right at the moment. The water isn't too cold. I spent the evening editing a video in the back of my van, which allowed me to test out the electrical system, which seems to be working very well. There's a storm going on out there. So cozy in here. I love the sound of the rain. How's that for some breakfast? Plums from a tree that I parked next to. The plums on that tree are so tasty, so I couldn't help but stock up for the next few days. After packing up the van, I needed to find some Wi-Fi to upload my YouTube video. First, I went to McDonald's, but they only let me use their Wi-Fi for one hour. So then I had to drive to Burger King where I got some onion rings and there I used their unlimited Wi-Fi to upload the rest of my video. I then drove out of Bern to Hertzville, which is a little village where I met up with the beekeeper. This is a bee house, home to 24 colonies of honeybees. And in this video, I'm going to meet up with a Swiss beekeeper who is going to show me the ways of beekeeping in Switzerland. I think I've arrived. Oh gosh, that's a beautiful house. Ah, that is who I'm going to meet, Jonas Hoffman. Ah, hello. <laughs> Good to meet you, it's Jonas, right? Yes, nice to meet you. I've been a beekeeper for the last year and I keep two hives in my parents' garden in England. They are Langstroth hives, which are boxes that hold a number of movable frames that can be lifted up and out of the box to inspect. Jonas was about to show me a very different way of beekeeping where the bees are kept inside a house known as a bee house. I'm Johannes Hoffmann, I live in Herzwil. I'm 30 years old and I work as farmer and policeman. And beekeeping is my hobby. How many colonies of bees do you keep? Here in this house there are 24 and then I have another house two kilometers far away. Uh, I have eight. You might be wondering why bees are kept in these houses, and Jonas explained to me that it's partly tradition here in Switzerland to keep bees in houses, but also because winters can be very harsh, and the houses give a little more warmth throughout the winter. Normally, beekeeping can't be done in the rain, but in a bee house, the bees can be checked up on any time. I guess it's super handy having all, all of your beekeeping that's, stuff. That's, yes, that's, that's great because you have all that you need you have inside you you have not to to bring something with you you can keep your recure stuff like here and you're already ready for beekeeping yeah. <laughs> so let's have a look so you use the smoke from your cigarette Yes, that. yes. To calm them a little yeah. bit down, it's easier. Yeah, I haven't the 
uh, a smoker like like normal beekeepers. I don't smoke usually, but in the bee house, it's just to to calm down the bees. So, but. I've never seen this sort of beekeeping before. I'm used to them being in the box and lifting them up. They look well. Watch if you spot the queen. There she is. You see her? There she is, oh. with a yellow Yay. point. Yeah. Queen of this year. I use the same years as us in England. Is it? Is it it's international, worldwide? it's international, oh, wow. yes. The is the queen. So, that's the last one. I'm so surprised that there aren't just bees everywhere. You mentioned it's because they, the, the guard bees are on the other side mm -hmm. and you're actually opening them mm -hmm. from the back. Yes. Because normally, yeah. Yes, normally it yes. <laughs> it, it also depends on the genetic of, of yeah. the bees. Wow. So you've done your harvesting for this year? Yes, and yes. Now you're getting yes, ready yes. for the winter. Uh, end of July is the second, normally the second, second harvest. Yeah, I can see how it's uh, maybe a bit more time yes. consuming because yes. you can't just yes. lift them up and then back down. I don't know anyone with a bee house in England. So, wow, that's how you do an inspection on a bee house hive. Who built this house? The carpenter of of the village. Okay. Or the neighbor. <laughs> he he built this. I helped the hives I bought like that and uh, this one I did on my own. But this this four small I did also also on my own. Wow they look good. I did my first bit of like carpentry DIY mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. trying to build my van mm -hmm. and I realized it's really tricky to make things accurate and, mm, yeah. and neat. <laughs> yeah. So I can imagine with a a beehive which you need to be perfect size like you need yes. it to be the right yes. spacings and everything inside you yeah. have to to have the right space from the outside the bee house also looks beautiful with multicolored entrances to each of the beehives i asked Jonas whether this was for a practical reason but he explained to me that it was just for nice looks some people do beekeeping for profit Others, like Jonas, do it purely for the joy of watching and learning about bees. And this is why he designed and created such a nice looking house to keep his bees in. Whilst I was admiring the house, I saw Jonas wandering around his field looking at the ground. So you're not just a beekeeper, <laughs> you're yes. a mushroom forager. Whoa. So that's gonna be your dinner tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's loads more here as well. Field mushrooms. Jonas then showed me his honey extraction room where he allowed me to taste some of this year's honey. That is a really big <laughs> honey extraction. How many frames can you put in there? Uh, 24. Oh, those are the labels that you were talking about. The yes. quality control. Yes. That's so good. is that necessary if you're going to sell honey in Switzerland? No, it's not necessary. It's, it's good. just an official label from the Swiss Peking Association. It's full of, uh, you say, wild, wild tonic forest honey. Oh wow! Like, like the that's dark, the, the dark one. That's from the aphids. Yes. Yeah. That is what's in here. Yes. And then what is this? <laughs> That's my special edition. <laughs> it's like a spring honey, mm -hmm. and uh, the spring honey becomes very hard yeah. with the time, and so I, I let them, oh. I let them become hard. Mm -hmm. Not much, but yeah. some jars, and they, I, I reopen the jar, and later in July I fill the fresh, the fresh forest honey in, and so it looks like this. Mm -hmm.
Whoa. Do you have any of this honey for sale I can buy? This three you can have. Really? That's pretty, yes. Wow. That is very kind. Yeah. Herzwiler Bienen Honig. Genau. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. We've got some Swiss honey. Uh, rather a lot of it as well. This dark stuff here is like from aphids, like aphid honey. And then this is spring honey which has been creamed, which gives it this really nice texture. That is a big dog. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was so interesting. I love bee houses. They just look amazing. It's so nice being inside the bee house where you can inspect the bees out away from the, the wind and the rain. And yeah, it was just super interesting learning about the Swiss way of beekeeping. So thanks Jonas for your time and for your honey. Jonas gave me some of his Swiss honey. I gave him some of my English honey, so we did a little trade. And now I'm about to drive to my next stop, which is the country of Slovenia. And I am going to have a break from camping in my van for a few days because I've got an Airbnb booked in the mountains. It's this beautiful off-grid wooden hut where I'm going to be living for the next five or six days. So I'll see you there. <laughs> it is noisy out there. I'm sleeping next to all the truck drivers. Good night. Last night I slept next to all the truck drivers at the service station somewhere in Germany and I'm continuing my drive now towards Salzburg, Austria where I'm going to meet up with someone who I've been messaging on Instagram and he's going to take me on some fun outdoor adventures. Got to be looking good on the road. Yeah. I've learned to not feel self-conscious in any situations now. There's people walking past me right now. Probably very confused at why this guy's shaving in his car. But it don't bother me. I'm just living my life. Doing what I need to do. Hmm, my face is nice and smooth again. We're in Austria! I'm in the countryside now. Just parked up my van, met up with a guy called Alex and his family, and today we're gonna go mushroom foraging. Look at this beautiful house. All of that behind me, that's all grapevine. And uh, Alex and his dad just uh, picked some grapes for me. And this, which translates to stone mushroom, right? Yep. In England, we call it a penny bun because it kind of looks like a bun on top. And here, I guess it looks like a stone as well. What are they called? Uh, a fire salamander, maybe. What? No way. That's a salamander. Whoa, no, we don't have those in England. <laughs> That's mad. Oh, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> it's a no. little bit soft, but I think we'll pick it up. Yeah. You can see that stuff lying around. Oh yeah. I think that's from the pigs rooting around oh. the wild boar. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a th really dense, thick one. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm hearing shouts. <laughs> yeah, he's waving. There's one. Look at this! Oh, wow! Look at that. That's a beautiful one. I'm in heaven. Mushroom heaven. 
got this knife to just clean up the edges just to say you're having to do cleaning at home. And it's funny, it's so, they're so different. Like this one, the dark one. Yeah. And this is a very That's light really one. light colored, yeah. yeah. Got a knife here. This yeah. spot here is where your grandfather... My grandfather showed me that we came in the first time when I went uh, picking mushrooms and he said uh, there's always uh, mushrooms and... And guess still what? Still there are. <laughs> They're still here. Unbelievable. One. Two. It's really long. <laughs> it's got a long stem. Nice. <laughs> oh, look. Another salamander. That's amazing. <laughs> this is what it looks like when a mushroom forager has got to the spot before you. See these bits of cut up mushroom that someone's obviously found one and then been cleaning it. But it's a good sign that we're in the right area. I thought I got lucky, but it's already been eaten. Oh, the basket is filling up. Oh, look at that, a tiny one. Oh. You can see, if it's like that, you can see why they say it looks like a, like a rock. Yeah. <laughs> that has got a massive cap, and it's being currently eaten by a slug. Smallest one of the day. One, two, three, four. Whoa. When you find one, sometimes it's good to just stop and then look around. There's another one there, but it's not a penny bun. But there might be more. Oh, I see two. Oh, no way. Look at that. Beautiful. That is just perfect. You can sometimes know whether they're going to be good inside because they're very heavy. If they're light, it can often mean that inside they've been eaten away by other animals. But this one is so nice. Cleaning time. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Pretty one. Wow. We were just about to drive home. Uh, oh! Uh, over there, that's a nice one. Eh? And Alex spotted a big mushroom. Now this one's a very unusual species of mushroom. That's a cauliflower mushroom. Yeah. They look like a coral or an alien or something. Well, you'll get there eventually. <laughs> what? And these taste good? Yeah. yeah. Smell, smell on them. They smell amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try and clean the leaves off a bit. Yeah, they're a lot of cleaning work. Yeah. Or you can smell it just from standing over here. Yeah. Good day foraging mushrooms. Stein pills, cauliflower. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Whoa. We arrived back at the house and now we had to clean and prepare the mushrooms we had found. Cheers. Cheers to the good mushroom <laughs> <and> harvest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Alex and I cleaned out the cauliflower fungus whilst Fritz cut and started drying the others. It's such a funny looking mushroom. <laughs> The penny bun room. So you're gonna dry some of them? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So these tomatoes are from your garden? Yep. Yeah. Alex's family have very kindly said they can wash some of my clothes and bed sheets. I'm a bit worried about my bed sheet because it's gone this horrible yellow color. I don't know whether it's mold or excessive sweat. Look at it all, like these yellow lines. What is that? Been a bit rainy today, but we are now going to try and catch a fish. I've got my spinning rod, some spinners. Let's give it a go. That looks like a mess. <laughs> I told you that my fishing gear is a mess. Let's go try and catch a fish. Okay. And we're already at the fishing spot. So there's trout in here, there's char, and sometimes rainbows. Yep. Oh, no way, first cast. <laughs> Brown trout. Look at the spots and the colors on it. So much fun. Such a beautiful little Austrian town with a river flowing through it. <laughs> that was epic. Oh, it's been such a good day. Really good. We got back to the house to find Fritz cooking up the cauliflower fungus we had found in the morning. We sat down and I had a taste of a number of different drinks, including a homemade elderberry drink. Mm. They basically use this as medicine. Also a homemade elderflower cordial. Mm as well as some local Austrian wine. So that is that mushroom and it's been breaded in a beer bath. You can see the mushroom. That is so good. Thank you very much for a very good day. Yeah, you're <laughs> Before leaving, they kindly let me take a warm shower, which felt amazing after a week of lake washing. They also gave me a couple of bags full of fresh mushrooms, a jar of dried ones, and also a mushroom powder made from a species called the scaly hedgehog mushroom. I was feeling very blessed. Alex's mum cleaned all my clothes my bed sheets, everything, and folded them really neatly. And uh, yeah, they looked after me so well. When I started messaging Alex on Instagram a few days ago, I did not expect it would lead to such a fun day. Alex and his mum and dad are lovely people. They made me feel so at home. 
which is really nice after spending a week in the back of my van. You know, some sort of home feeling is very good. I had such a fun time foraging mushrooms, catching fish, cooking up some really nice food, and yeah, I absolutely loved it. Next, I am off to Slovenia. To the mountains we go. Welcome to my house for the next five days. This is where I'm going to be living. It's a hut in the Slovenian Alps and I am so excited to be here. Look at that. I am so far away from people. I've got this place to myself. This is incredible. I want to go hiking through the woods and the mountains. I want to go foraging for wild mushrooms because there are apparently loads of them in the woods here. I want to relax and enjoy myself and cook up some tasty food. And I'm also gonna try and get on with some of my editing work that I need to do because I have been having too much fun the last few days and I need to sit down and do some editing. But what a place to spend some time. I need to go to the loo. That's the loo over there. It's a compost toilet. There's thunder rumbling in the distance. It looks like it's gonna storm, so I'm gonna get all my stuff inside. This has got to be one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. The drive up here was just ridiculous. I managed to drive like halfway up this mountain in my car. So that was Neva who owns the Airbnb that I'm staying at but she was a little bit concerned about my car and whether I'm going to make it up the rest of the mountain. I'll try. But then the roads got seriously steep and Neva uh, took me in her 4x4 to get the rest of the way up and it was so steep. I would never have done it in my van. Welcome drink. What is this? Uh, schnapps with honey. It is not so sweet. Thank you. That's at your disposal. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I am so high up here and in the distance I can see mountains. I can see Lake Bahinj, which is in the bottom of the valley. And I'm just surrounded by forests. It is just incredible. I'm so tired from all the traveling the last few days. So I'm gonna to go to bed. I will see you tomorrow and I'll give you a proper tour around this place because it is pretty incredible. Good morning. That was the best night's sleep I've had in a while. I've been in my van for the last like two weeks. So yeah, that was nice in a proper bed. Really nice and warm because I had the fire going yesterday evening. And boy, it looks nice out there. That's one of the best views after waking up that I've ever had. I'm a lucky person right now. <sighs> this is a ridiculous view. Even though it's only mid-September, it is quite cold up here in the mountains. But luckily I've got this really nice wood-burning stove. It has an oven section, it's got a fire section. I've got a slightly cooler bit under here which I can use to dry mushrooms because hopefully I'm gonna find lots of mushrooms this week and I want to preserve them and drying them is a good way of doing that so they can go in there. And then under here is my wood stores. In fact, there's not much wood in here so I'm gonna to need to get some from outside. So to heat up water, I have to fill up this little container and then put it on the, the cooler part of the stove. This part I can use for cooking. Yeah. 
mushrooms and egg on toast. Yum. I want to give you a little tour of this handcrafted hut that sits, I think, 1,000 500 meters above sea level. It's got the most incredible view and behind the cabin is just miles and miles of forest. I think the nearest neighbor is 20 minute walk that way. And then there's another neighbor, I think half an hour walk that way. This hut is completely off grid. So there is a solar panel on the roof. I believe south is that way. So the sun comes round, shines on the solar panel, charges up two batteries, which are in the cellar. All the water that is used for showering and washing up is collected rainwater, but drinking water is in a well. About 20 minutes walk that way down a footpath. So I'm gonna have to try and find that at some point. Heating the cabin is done completely with wood. There is an incredible wood stack around the back. The most beautiful wood stack I've ever seen, I think. All different sizes, there's kindling, larger pieces, and then some great big chunks to keep the fire going for a long time. And cooking food, I can either do on this little portable gas stove in there, or I can use the top of the, uh, the wood burning stove. The batteries in the cellar, which are charged by the sun and the solar panel, mean that there can be lights in there. And then there's also a number of wall sockets, which means I can charge my laptop and charge batteries and get on with my work, which is brilliant. There's no Wi-Fi here, but occasionally if I walk down the hill there, I can get some 3G so I can have some connection to the online world. When I want to get food, I have a few different options. I can walk into the woods and try and find mushrooms and berries because there's an awful lot of mushrooms growing in these woods at the moment and lots of edible ones too. I can walk up a footpath up there which goes across the mountains. I think it's about 20, 30 minute walk and I can find, I think the lady who owns this hut said there's a shepherd who sells cheese. So I can get cheese if I walk that way. And then if I want to get anything else, it involves walking about 20 minutes down the mountain to my van, where I then need to drive about half an hour to the town of Bled or Bahinge. Bahinge is that way, Bled is that way. And in those towns, I'll be able to pick up all the other food that I need. So although this hut is off grid and so far away from other people, it's actually got everything you need to live a rather comfortable life. The only thing I haven't got is company. So it may get a little lonely up here on my own. I'll show you inside now, because it's really cool. This is the kitchen. This is like the heart of the cabin. It's where my heat comes from. It's where I can cook food. And it's where I can dry my clothes over. It's such a nice wood burner. I'm not sure what it's called. It's a Nordica, but it's got this cooking area here. And obviously that's the main hot part right over the fire. And then on the right side, it's a slightly cooler section where I can put my water. I've got this bowl here, which I filled up with water. So when I take a shower, I can use some of that so my shower isn't just freezing cold. I can also use that warmer water to wash up the dishes. There's the fire section on the left where I can load up the wood and keep the fire going. On the right hand side is the oven, which at the moment is 300 degrees C. Wow. So you could roast a chicken pretty quick in there. Below the oven is a slightly cooler section because of course underneath it's gonna be cooler because the heat rises up. And in there I put some mushrooms that I collected the last few days to dry them out. When it's prime mushroom season, you can often find a lot more mushrooms than you can eat. So I wanted to dry some. These are porcini mushrooms, which are really good dried. They smell so strong. So I cut the mushrooms into thin slices, put them on some baking, uh, paper and then pop them in there and under that it probably isn't any more than 50 degrees C Then there's a really neat drawer underneath which stores lots of wood And then when I need to get more wood I just have to pop outside to the wood store and collect some more We've got a sink with rainwater which is pretty neat and then a bit of space here to prepare food So the kitchen is quite small, but there is just about enough room to cook and prepare food comfortably a incredible kitchen view of the mountains. And then in this room here is where all the food is kept. This is the larder. This is the food room, which is rather well stocked. The only stuff I'll have to get from the shops this week will be the fresh stuff. So vegetables, meat, and fruit. Then in this door is a bathroom. There's a battery powered pump shower, which I'm gonna have to try and use at some point this week, or I could just not wash. 
and a toilet. However, this toilet apparently shouldn't be used much because there is no septic tank and it should only be used in an emergency nighttime piss situation. This is the living area where I'll be eating my food and probably doing my work. This cabin is probably big enough for two or three people. Books on the wall and plenty of nice decorations. Snowshoes and skis for winter. And up here is where I'm going to sleep. Hey, welcome to my bedroom. This is just so cozy. I've got a double bed, which is super comfortable. Had a really good night's sleep last night in there. Bedside table, which is perfect because it meant I could put my computer on there and I did lots of editing last night whilst laying in bed. Got a radio. There's a little window there which I've had open because upstairs in this cabin it gets really hot because downstairs the fire gives us so much heat and uh, you need the window to be open so you can have some fresh air throughout the night. I love the ceiling because in most houses you sort of have a flat ceiling and then above that is loft space but in here the angle of the roof is actually being incorporated into the bedroom which is so nice. Got some drawers with some towels in and yeah that's about it. Fire extinguisher just in case. It quickly gets so hot in here because it's such a small space the fire heats it up. About 10 meters away from the hut is this composting toilet and I've got this grilling area here which I'd like to use at some point this week. So there's the mountain hut that I'm staying in this week. Today I need to get on with work, so I'm going to plug my laptop in and just sit there and edit my videos. I almost forgot to show you the cellar. It's a massive room down there. And it's cold, so I can put all my food that needs to stay cold down here. Computer, hard drive, notebook, Bluetooth speaker so they can listen to some nice music. And today I'm going to work. Editing is going well. It's rather special being able to sit here, get on with my work. I start to forget where I am. And then when I get a bit bored of the work, all I have to do is look out the window and then my mind is blown by that incredible view out there. Pretty amazing place to do my work, I have to say. Lunch time. Cheese on toast. There's so many of these nice purple flowers. These are the peaks in this area and there they are. Wow, that's impressive. I would love to see a brown bear. That'd be so cool. Had a pretty good day in the hut. Got lots of editing and work done. Went for a little walk ate food. It was just an average day really. It's just what I would do if I was at home. But just made 10 times better being able to look out at that incredible view. So apparently there are brown bears and wolves in this area. And also golden eagles. 
I would so love to see a bear. If I don't see a bear in the next few days, then I think I'm gonna go bear watching in Finland at some point, because apparently on the eastern side, near the Russian border, they have quite a lot of bears. I think black bears and brown bears, and also wolverines. Mm. Today is going to be a food day. I want to go into the town to buy some food. I want to walk into the woods and find some food. And this evening I want to cook some food. And right now, I am eating food. Two eggs on some olive oil fried bread with some cheese. Mmm. The walk down to where I parked my van is about 20 minutes and it's like that steep. It's like it actually hurts your like the front muscles of your legs because you're trying to slow yourself down constantly. I've got to remember to not get too much food otherwise it will be impossible to walk back up the hill with a rucksack and my hands full of stuff. We're at the supermarket. I got my food. And I'm currently snacking on these Milka Jaffa cake things. They're pretty good. I'm gonna go back up the mountain and I'm gonna look for some more food in the woods. Every year in the autumn, something incredible happens in the woods and that is a display of thousands of mushrooms. I think in this area of Slovenia they must have had some rain last week because right now there are mushrooms everywhere. You can't miss them. There are mushrooms of every shape, size, colour you can imagine and there are even some which I know how to identify that I can take and eat for dinner. And all you need to go mushroom foraging is something to put your mushrooms in, ideally a basket because it looks nice, and a knife. This knife is a mushroom knife and it has a brush on one side so you can brush the dirt off with the knife. I've just found the first edible mushroom of the day. And it might not look too impressive but that is a baby chanterelle. You pay good money for these if you go to restaurants or markets three chanterelle mushrooms. I spent the last few years doing lots of reading about different species of mushrooms uh, and I've only learnt maybe 10 or so edible wild mushrooms like properly but there are thousands of species in the woods and once you clean the mushroom you pop it in the basket and then tonight we eat them. The species of mushrooms that I'm looking for are mycorrhizal fungi which means that they have a mutually beneficial relationship with the trees. So they basically work together. They're, the roots of the fungus are connected to the roots of the trees and the trees give the fungus nutrients and sugars and the fungus returns nutrients from the soil to the trees. So often you can look for the trees first. So these around me are all spruce trees, I believe. And these trees are known to have mycorrhizal relationships with chanterelles and also porcini mushrooms so i'm in the right area i've just got to keep my eyes on the ground and try and find some because it is sometimes very hard to spot them i think we found some more chanterelles two three four 
I just went past the lady who had a basket so full of mushrooms. So I need to park here or somewhere near here. This is where the mushroom people are at. Let's go hunt down the mushrooms. I want this basket full. You're probably all familiar with this mushroom. This one's a bit broken, but it is called the fly agaric. And it's the mushroom in Mario Kart and like the typical mushroomy looking mushroom. And an interesting thing I've heard about these is that when you find these, it's likely you're gonna find Porcini's nearby. Porcini's are what I'm looking for and they're edible. And I saw this just on the floor there and then I scanned the area and would you believe it, just here is a Porcini. A really dumpy round one. I'm so happy to have found a Porcini. Nice, a few more of these and we are set for dinner. Whoa, this one's really hiding. Baby. Oh, look at that one. Sometimes they're hiding in the grass. These ones have really dark caps. That was fun. Everything I need to make a mushroom soup. It's so funny. Everyone here, I think, goes foraging for mushrooms. Two people just got out their car and are walking through the woods with baskets. There's about five cars parked up there and they all got out with baskets. All right, I need to bring my food, mushrooms and stuff all the way up that path to the top of the mountain. This is tough, about halfway up and I just can't help but spot mushrooms. Look at that. Oh. Lovely. <sighs> we made it. Yes. Home sweet home. For dinner tonight, I want to cook up a mushroom soup, seeing as I have an abundance of mushrooms. I've got some dried porcini mushrooms, which I collected last week. I have fresh porcini mushrooms and chanterelles that I collected this morning. And then I have this powder, mushroom powder, from a species of mushroom called, I think, the scaly hedgehog. I'm gonna start chopping everything up and prepping it all. I've got some potatoes to add some carbohydrates. And then I've got some onion, garlic, cheese, and cream. I think I'm gonna fry these mushrooms and then put them on top of the soup. And then just use the dried mushrooms and the powder for the flavoring of the mushrooms. I can't help but add some pancetta to the soup as well because it just makes everything better. All the food is chopped. So I'm gonna cook on top of this, so I need to get this hot. For the dried mushrooms, you need to rehydrate them. So I filled up a saucepan with some water. I'm heating it on the stove. I took some of these dried morels, which are hanging from the roof. Those morel mushrooms, I'm guessing, would have been found at the beginning of this year, because that's when they fruit. And then I took a handful of the porcini mushrooms that I dried the other day, and put them in the water, and then I just leave them to soak. And then the flavors from the mushrooms go into the water, and then the mushrooms go nice and soft. I need to find a big pot to cook my soup in. Soup. I can add the onions and garlic. I'm going to add all the mushrooms and the liquid to the pan. Now it's turning into a soup mushroom powder. God, that stuff is so strong.
It is really mushroomy. Don't know why I'm so surprised. And the pepper went up my nose. Let's serve this up. Got some cream. Well, this is the most mushroomy soup I have ever seen in my life. Cheers. It's so mushroomy. It feels so good to be eating food which came from the forests around this hut. And that concludes another day in the mountain hut. Today I'm going to do more work and also cook up some more nice food. That is my plan for today. Not much. I wanna try the grill outside and I've also gotta eat the rest of my mushroom soup. It's quite interesting, every morning I wake up, I look out the window and I see clouds in the bottom of the valley and they sort of move through the valley and then they lift off and disperse as the day goes on but I'm going to sit inside get on with my work and then maybe this afternoon I'll go for a walk I heard there's a shepherd that lives and works just up the mountain so I might go and walk to him and try and get some local cheese for those of you who don't know I make YouTube videos for my job it's not a very well paying job but it uh, it just about covers the cost of my fun that I'm having a large part of my job is editing, sitting down at a computer, compiling footage that I've shot into stories. It can be very time consuming and often I will be sat at a desk for days on end, feeling like I'm not really getting anywhere. But I suppose one of the brilliant things about my job is that I can take this computer, take my hard drive anywhere in the world and get on with my work. And this is certainly the best view I've had from an office space ever. It really is magnificent. This is what my computer screen looks like. And then I drag the footage from there into the timeline where I then edit it together. That's my life. This hard drive here has got everything I've ever shot from 2018 onwards. So I've got all the footage on there. That's a 10 terabyte hard drive. And then I've got a smaller hard drive here, which is just what I'm editing from. The speaker on this computer is pretty pants. So I have this, which is a portable speaker, which means I can listen to the audio nicer. I linked that up with Bluetooth and then I can listen to the video. I always have a glass of water by my desk because water is life. And now I just have to get on with it. mushroom soup and a piece of bread for lunch or is it a stew what's the difference between a soup and a stew is it that a soup is smooth and a stew has got lots of things in because if that is the case then this is a stew There's nothing to clean. I just wanted to use this beautiful brush. Oh, what a wonderful life. Oh. Oh, maps are so big and clumsy and apparently there is a shepherd. So I'm going to walk and keep walking till I get some cheese. It's like trying to hold a slippery 
fish. I got my editing done and now I'm going on a quest for cheese. Don't want anyone breaking into my hut. I think I go up there. Oh, the hut looks beautiful from up here. Not really sure how long the walk is gonna be. But I've been told that if I keep walking along this path, I'll find the shepherd into the woods. My first neighbors, although it doesn't look like anyone's in. Oh, I love wooden huts and cabins. They just look so beautiful. There's so many of these ant colonies. And there's a bigger one over here. I've been walking for about an hour and I still haven't found the shepherd. I may have gone the wrong way. I've got no signal on my phone and I haven't got a map. I'm gonna struggle to find it, I think. I'll just keep on walking. I'm getting really hungry as well. People who live in these parts must be really fit and healthy because walking up these steep, rocky forest paths is sure not easy. There's a squirrel with a pine cone in its mouth. I see a hut up there. Please say it's Mr. Shepherd. Doesn't look like anyone is here. Nope. It's actually starting to feel at home here. I could stay here for quite a bit longer than five days, I think. I realized wherever I've got my work to do, as long as I can keep busy doing that, feels pretty homely. Right, this evening, I'm going to get the grill on over there and cook up some nice food over the fire. I didn't find the cheese that I was looking for, but I did come back with all these mushrooms. These are Sarcodon imprecatus, I think the Latin is. Also known as scaly hedgehog because of its hedgehog-like spines. Yeah, I'm gonna dry all these out and then powder them. Look at all of that, that's like a kilogram of mushrooms from one walk in the woods. I love it here. When you find mushrooms, you then need to clean them because they're covered in dirt. I now have a reason to sweep the floor. It's grilling time. I'm gonna need a selection of different sizes of wood. We got our wood. Mushrooms, garlic, shallots, pepper, potatoes, a nice iceberg lettuce. We're gonna have a feast. I've also got some cheese because I want to try something called raclette. I couldn't find proper raclette cheese, but apparently you can do it with Emmental. I've never used this sort of cooking surface before. So I just looked it up and raclette is basically heating cheese on something a bit like this. Put the cheese on top, there's some candles underneath heats it up and it kind of grills the cheese until it's really melted. And then you put it on bread or with potatoes. Apparently it's a Swiss thing, but other Alpine countries also like to do it. I've only had once before at an Austrian Christmas market. So I'm gonna give it a go myself. I found this raclette thing in the hut and no one had used it before. It was still in its packaging. There's three candles. One, two, three. The candles are lit and this plate goes on top. So I'm going to set this down somewhere. I don't know if that's how you're meant to do it. Let's do some chopping. I thought I could try making some thin potato fries. Make like chips. It might sound cringy and cliche, but 
since I came up here into the mountain hut for the past few days, in fact, since I started living in my van actually for the past few weeks, I think I am beginning to learn how to live in the present, which for me has been an incredibly hard thing to do. I often find myself planning for the future and I'm generally rushing things to get them done. But being here the last few days has definitely allowed me to just take it a bit easier and slow down and live more in the present. And I'm very happy about that because the present is all we've got. Tomorrow isn't reality, as Alan Watts said. It hasn't happened yet. But I can assure you, right now, I'm cutting mushrooms. So I might as well enjoy it. I think I might be going mad though. Something else that Alan Watts said um, is that if you're talking to yourself, that's a bad sign. And I've done an awful lot of talking to myself since I've been isolated up this mountain. I haven't had any other people to talk to, but somehow I'm not lonely. I honestly thought after a few days of living in my van and being up here in the mountains, I would be lonely. I do miss friends and family. I just don't feel lonely. And I think that's probably because I have kept busy. That's enough rambling. Blimey. This is fun, you can just chuck stuff on and cook it. I'm using some pancetta to get the fat out of it. And I can cook the steak and all these vegetables. The raclette is racletting. Gosh, it doesn't look too appetizing right now. I think you want it to go like bubbly and brown on top. What I'm doing here kind of reminds me of teppanyaki. In Japan, they have these cooking worktops, these metal cooking worktops, where they use the whole surface to cook food. Some areas are hotter than others, so they can perfectly cook their food. You should watch teppanyaki videos on YouTube. They're really satisfying. I would love to go eating teppanyaki one day in my life in Japan. This is gonna be my finishing board. Everything that's finished cooking goes on here. Tastes like a Walker's crisp. There we go, there's my feast. Potatoes, steak, salad, raclette, cheese. Didn't really go brown on the top. Don't think it was really hot enough, but still it melted and it looked tasty. I'm gonna feast. And because I'm in the mountains so far away from other people, there's no such thing as manners. So I'm just going to use my fingers and stuff it all in my mouth. So I can take a potato chip and then tear off a bit of the melted cheese, put it on top of the potato chip with a little bit of salad and a small slice of steak. I reckon the bears could find me tonight with the smell of the fire and the food. Tomorrow I'm gonna to try and catch a fish from the lake down in the valley. Yum. Another day in the hut. So I've been heating up water on the wood burner and then that goes into this bucket, sort of warm. And then there's this battery powered shower. This is the pump, goes in there. And then I just have to click the on button. And it works. Wow. I'm gonna take a shower. At the bottom of the valley down there is a lake. It's called Lake Behinge. And today my aim is to walk to the car, drive down to the lake, fish for as long as it takes to catch my dinner and then come back and then cook it up in the hut. I had to get a fishing license for the day. I got a catch and take license, which means I can take a limit of fish. It cost me 30 euros, so hopefully I get enough fish to make it all worth it. For now though, I'm still eating my mushroom soup that I made the other day and drying a load of mushrooms on the table. I'm 
walking down the mountain again. This time, we're in search of fish. Although the lake doesn't really look that far away, it takes 40 minutes drive to get there, down these very thin, rocky tracks. The lake looks incredible. This place is paradise. The water is just crystal clear. I can see fish swimming around in the water. This place is just stunning. In this lake, I believe there are lake trout, rainbow trout, perch, chub, burbot, and char. All those fish are predatory species, which is why I am using this. It's called a spinner. There's a treble hook with this spinning metal blade. When I pull that through the water, this spins and attracts the fish's attention. They think it's like another little fish or something that they want to eat. So they chase after it. Well, that's what I want them to do. So far, I haven't caught anything. Oh look, there's some ducks. I think that line there where the light colour meets the dark is where the water drops really deep. Hmm, they're proving to be tricky. No fish. Found a banana though in my bag. Not a bad pub garden. Back up to the hut, back up there for my last night. Got to leave early tomorrow morning. But it's been fun. I just packed my bags because now I've got to leave the hut and carry on with my road trip around Europe. I think I'm rather attracted to mountain wooden huts like this because I found myself renting another one later on in the year. From November till December, I've got a whole month booked up in a hut in the Austrian Alps. So I'm really looking forward to that. That might be more of a challenge though because not only is it for a whole month, it's also going to be winter time and in the Alps winters can be pretty cold. So it's probably going to be cold, snowy and I'm going to have to have the wood burner in there on probably the whole time. Anyway, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. It is pouring down with rain, super windy and I've got to make my way down the mountain. I'm soaked. I just had a shower in the hut and now I'm having another shower. Oh dear. I got all my camera stuff on my back and my laptop, so I'm hoping it doesn't get too wet and break. Right, my adventure continues. I think I'm gonna stay in Slovenia for another four or five days because there are other parts of Slovenia which I want to explore. And then after that, I honestly don't have a clue where I'm going. Stay tuned for the adventure. That's gonna be me one day, building my own log cabin in the woods. It's my pipe dream anyway. Every few days you have to do a big sort out of the van, otherwise it just gets too messy. The other day I was in Slovenia in a lay-by and I did the same thing. Parked up, took everything out, cleaned it all, tidied it all and it made for a lot more of a nice experience for the next few days. Why did they have the park right next to me? It just makes me jealous. 
Look at that, they've even got like a bike rack. I really want a bike rack. Who thinks I should put a bike rack on the back and then I can um, get a bike and do some cycling. Save money on fuel and also be healthy and fun. Yay, they still work. The reason I've got my underwear hanging up and my clothes scattered around the van is because I cleaned them this morning and they didn't dry in time so I've got to try and dry them whilst on the road. Anyway, that's the van packed. Right, let's go out of Austria to the Czech Republic. Yay, my van still works. <laughs> Back to sleeping in there. I'm looking forward to it. We've got loads of exciting adventures over the next few weeks. Loads. Public transport is the way to go if you're in a city, I've realized. For the last week I've been taking public transport and it's really quite good. Cities like Vienna, they have a really efficient underground system. One month ago, I left my home country of England to travel around the world in my little van. I'm currently living a dream, meeting up with loads of great people in countries all across Europe. From climbing up cliffs in Switzerland and mushroom foraging in Austria, to eating in a two Michelin star restaurant and finding an off-grid hut in the mountains of Slovenia. This has truly been an unexpected adventure, but I'm loving it and it now continues for the foreseeable future. Am I in Czech Republic now? I think I am. Look at this. Endless, endless forests. This is Czech Republic and they have a lot of trees, it seems. I'm nearly at my camp spot for tonight. First thing I've done in Czech Republic is get a kebab. I got caught out in the rain, got soaked, but at least I got food. Oh, the bread is crunchy. This is my hotel tonight, next to a river in a small town of Czech Republic. I'm right in the south currently. My plan is to drive pretty much the whole way through passing through Prague and then up into Germany. Everywhere that I've parked my van for the past month has been found through an app called Park for Night. It's a free app where you can find places to park your car and camp in the night. You can search your area for places to camp. It will give you loads of different suggestions. You click on one and then it will tell you if it's free or if you need to pay and other people can review it and put their experiences of the spot it's really handy, and like I say, every place that I've camped over the past month has been through using this app. I always like parking near water because it means I can wash myself and also wash cooking equipment and other things like that. And it's just about to pour a brain again. I'm gonna get in the back and get cozy. Maybe I'll read a book. Oh, my bed sheets are still yellow. Look, I just found a piece of pasta. Ow. So little space. Yeah, they're kind of dry now. T-shirt is also dry, that's nice. I've been traveling now for one whole month. Whoa. And I've seen summer turn into autumn. The last few weeks it has got really cold. Like out there now it's about eight degrees C. Because at the beginning of my trip when I was in Switzerland it was like 30 degrees, nice and hot. Things are damp and they don't dry out quickly. I left the mountain hut to travel around some of the other parts of the country because I really wanted to go to the Socha Valley. It's a valley with a crystal clear blue river that flows through it. And from photos I'd seen, it looked like the most incredible, magical place. I arrived in the Socha Valley and then the same day, it poured down with rain. In fact, the rain was so heavy for the next day that the river was no longer blue, it was just brown. So I saw the Sucha Valley, I saw the river. Um, it was beautiful, just it wasn't blue and magical, it was just brown like chocolate. So that was a bit disappointing, but I still had a great time in Slovenia. I have to make notes of everything I did because I kind of forget all the details if I don't do that. Because the last 
week or two has been really busy. Now, I did something very, you could say, stupid. You could say exciting. I went to a fine dining restaurant. I've wanted to go to like a fancy food place for a while because um, it just looks fun. I want to tell you a bit about this food experience because it it changed me. <laughs> There's a restaurant in the Socha Valley called Hisa Franco run by a lady called Anna. And I watched a Netflix documentary about this particular restaurant and about this lady who uh, is a chef. And it was massively inspiring. It was really cool. It was on a series on Netflix called Chef's Table. I would highly recommend it. And I found myself going to the restaurant. It was the most crazy experience. Now it did set me back a little over 200 quid, but this was no restaurant. This wasn't just eating some food. Hisa Franco has two Michelin stars, I think. This place is one of the best restaurants in the world. And I was about to eat there. <laughs> Let me just read you some of the things on the menu. Beef tongue pastrami, seaweed crystal, jalapeno and wild plants. Sour milk, melon and garden berries. Lacto-fermented tomato water, carrot kebab, potato baked in August hay crust. It was a 20 course tasting menu. So you don't just get one plate of food like you do at a normal restaurant. You get loads of little dishes. You eat one, you get the next one, you eat it 20 times. Every single piece of food that arrived at the table was unexpected, looked like a piece of art, tasted crazy. Everything I put in my mouth that evening made my mouth feel something crazy, like an explosion of something. I find it hard to describe, but it's not normal food. One of the things that impressed me most was a potato baked in hay crust. It was just a potato, but it had been baked in hay, and you could open it up like an egg, and inside was the potato. It tasted incredible, and you could eat the hay as well. It was mind-blowing. Every single piece of food was interesting and exciting. And every time I'd finish one of the courses and I just wouldn't have a clue what was next. Eating this crazy food, I think made me realize that when creating something, there are no set rules. And however daft an idea sounds, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna work. It was a magical evening. It, was, it really was something special. I don't think I really understood what this sort of dining was about. I would often see the large plates with a tiny amount of food on them and a squiggle of sauce and just kind of think that it was all a bit silly. But I admit that I have been changed. I, I think it is amazing. Art created with food and art that you can eat. It was so cool. After leaving Slovenia, I made my way to the city of Vienna, but not before stopping off for some more van camping in a Austrian forest. I can see a hut on the other side of the valley and it looks beautiful. I want to live in a hut like that one day. Where I did a lot more mushroom foraging and I found copious amounts of chanterelle mushrooms. Like, a bucket full of them, it was madness. A friend very kindly allowed me to stay at their place in Vienna. So I actually parked my car up at a, like a car parking place just outside the city. I think it was 15 pounds for a whole week, which isn't too bad. Went into the city, stayed at my friend's place for the next week. The next week consisted of eating an enormous amount of chanterelle mushrooms because we had obviously found loads in the Austrian woods. Tenth mushroom meal of the week. Whilst I had a nice comfortable place to stay, I caught up on editing my videos. I sat down, compiled the footage and edited a couple of videos up, which felt really good. Whilst in the city, I discovered that I really enjoy meeting up with strangers. It might sound a bit odd, but meeting new people is rather fun, I've found. Especially when you're in other countries, when you don't really know your way around, it's great meeting up with locals who can help you and show you around. When I arrived in the city, I put a post on my Instagram, just asking if there was anyone around who wanted to meet up and hang out. 
and surprisingly a few people got back to me and I managed to make some new friends. So I'm going climbing at a climbing center somewhere in Vienna. One evening I met up with two guys, Sandro and Lorenz, and they took me to their local bouldering gym. It's basically an indoor room with climbing walls. You climb up these holds on the wall, get to the top, and then you jump back down and do it again. It's a, it's a fun activity though. It kind of uses a bit of your brain to try and figure out the best route up. And then it's also quite physically enduring because you've got to use your muscles and your toes and your fingertips and your legs. It's an activity which uses like every part of your body. And uh, yeah, I had a really fun evening there doing some climbing. Then they took me to a bar where they taught me about a drink called Stumm, which is basically grape juice before it's turned into wine. And then the reason for it not being able to have that is... It's because it's fizzy. Because it's really fizzy. Yeah, that's why also the reason why it's technically a waste product. Yeah. Because you had to get the fizzy stuff out of the wine. And it is really tasty. Mm. The night after that, a friend and I went to a party in Vienna. It was all good fun, apart from the fact that I ended up losing my phone. I was a bit drunk at this point and I was kind of like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll, I'll find it. And then it dawned on me that I should really go looking for it. I went to the lost property and we asked, uh, is there a phone here? And they said yes. But of course they didn't know that it was my phone and they needed to check like whether it was mine. So they, they asked me a security question. They said, what is on the back of your phone? On the back of my phone, quite embarrassingly, is a sticker of a schnitzel and a sticker of a fox. So I had to say, yep, my phone is the one with the schnitzel on it. And they were like, nice, yep, you must be the only person in the world with a schnitzel on your phone. Anyway, I got back the phone. Yay! Just walked into Wien and apparently you're not allowed to honk your horn. Then the following day I met up with another Instagram follower who took me fishing. I got a bag with some donuts and sweets so we can just fish and eat. Today I've met up with a guy called Ben. We're gonna try and catch a fish. I haven't done this for a while, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we can catch something, yeah, right? For sure. So do you think we're gonna catch something? Yeah, for sure. You think? Yeah. No, really? Yeah. The confidence in this man. Whoa. We're currently underneath a bridge and we're watching fish swimming in the water just down there. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First cast. The big one didn't take it. <laughs> Thanks Ben, this is fun. <laughs> oh, lovely mate. <laughs> Make it look really Perfect. big. <laughs> yeah. <Wow>. 40 pounder. <laughs> ah. Yes, well done. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Wow. Yes. They are beautiful. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, we caught some fish. Donuts. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks massive. <laughs> oh, it's been so much fun fishing in Vienna. Catching a big cup. Oh. And that brings me up until now. And the next few weeks consists of a lot more meeting up with people who are currently strangers, people who have been messaging me on Instagram and have been kind enough to offer me either some accommodation or invite me to go and do some fun activities with them. And yeah, I'm super hyped for the next few weeks. Some of the things I plan to do involve more fishing, more cooking, more foraging, um, meeting up with some pro chefs who are going to hopefully teach me some cooking skills, doing some city tours. 
There's an awful lot of things that I'm going to do, and I'm super hyped. Happy birthday, brother. Yep, I do miss my friends and family. It's my brother's birthday today. Wish I could celebrate it with you. I'll see you when I'm back home. When it comes to food, I like to cook up like proper meals most of the time. But other times, I'm very lazy. And that's why I like to carry some jars of ready-made pasta sauce and ramen noodles. These, you just put them in some water, add the flavoring, and they taste really good. They fill you up. My two go-to van living foods. And then other days, I'll be inspired and motivated to cook up a proper meal from scratch. But tonight, I'm just gonna have some noodles, um, strawberry milkshake, and maybe some of these chocolatey things. While I'm making my food, I'm gonna do a little Q&A. Lots of people have been asking me questions about life in my van and traveling. I screenshotted a few that I had on my Instagram and I'm gonna answer some of them while I cook my noodles. How many more mushrooms do you think you'll need to eat before you become a mushroom yourself? That's a very good question. I've got a bag full of dried mushrooms here. I've got another bag full of dried mushrooms here. I've got a jar full of mushrooms in there. And I've been eating just a diet consisting mostly of mushrooms because I've been finding loads in the woods. However, I need to take it easy. I don't want to have too many. I think I have already become a mushroom. In answer to your question, I don't think I will become a mushroom, however many mushrooms I eat. What will you do when you get back? I'm gonna celebrate Christmas with my family, I think. Probably get a really nice big turkey, have a proper roast dinner, crispy potatoes. Yeah, I think, I think that's what I'll do. Would you ever do wine or grape harvesting? Yeah, I would love to do that. In fact, I might be staying on a vineyard in Croatia. It's kind of past wine grape harvesting season now though, I think. I think I needed to do that a bit earlier on in the year. What did you do before Just Alex? Yeah, before Just Alex, it wasn't Just Alex. It was me and my brother. I used to make fishing videos with my brother, Carl. He now runs that YouTube channel on his own. It's called Fish with Carl. So if you're into fishing, go head over to that channel. So yeah, that's what I used to do. I used to make YouTube videos about fishing with my brother. And I did that for about 15, 16 years. I mean, I also did lots of other things. Like I went to school and then I went to college and then I had a job for a bit, editing videos. What about your 90 day visa? Yeah, there's this thing. If you are an English person like me, you can come into European countries for 90 days within the last 180 days and it's likely that I'm going to go over that time so I need to come up with a plan I haven't formulated a plan for that yet but it might involve going out of what they call the Schengen region to allow me to stay in Europe longer it's quite complicated I'll explain it in one of my future videos but um, yeah I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet so you open the bag inside You've got a little pack of seasoning. That goes in there. <coughs> Smells so good. Got a little packet of dried vegetables. I'm gonna put a few of these dried mushrooms in there as well. Porcini mushrooms. For added flavor. And normally when I'm making ramen noodles, I like to have some enoki mushrooms and some pak choy and a boiled egg to go on top but um i don't have any of those things so it's just noodles tonight but that's all right i can deal with that and then you just boil it for a bit i've got to put a new bin bag in my bin do you wish you started this chapter of your life sooner no i don't I believe everything that came before in my life 
was all beneficial and useful things. I wouldn't be able to do what I do now without having done all the things that I had already done. Yeah, maybe I would have liked to have started this adventure earlier on in my life, but the fact is I don't think I would have been able to. It's easy to say, yeah, I wish I would have done it sooner, but I don't think it would have been possible. How long will you be living van life? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Don't have a clue. I can't answer that. At least the next week. That is for sure. But the way that I've been living isn't really van life. It's more travel life. Sometimes living in a van, sometimes begging friends to stay in their house and other times just booking up some accommodation. It's been a real mix. I think living in this little van constantly would be very tricky. Like, of course, possible, but um, I don't think I would enjoy it that much. Camping in my van for a few days or up to a week and then spending a few days in a nice hotel or a friend's place is definitely a good way of doing it, I've found. If you had a bigger van, like a big van with a shower and a toilet and everything like that, for sure, I reckon you could live in it quite comfortably. We have dinner. Look at that. It took maybe five or six minutes to make a whole saucepan of food. You can kind of use this as a table. It actually works really well. Would you ever plan on visiting any of the Scandinavian countries with your van? 100%. Next year, I want to go to Norway, Finland, and Sweden. I think that would be epic. It would be very different from this part of Europe that I'm in right now. A lot of wilderness and a lot of lakes. I'm currently reading this book about Finland because I want to learn like where I should go. I want to read the travel book and then kind of formulate a road trip. Mmm. Dude, that's a long noodle. What is your end goal with the van life project? And what have you enjoyed most during it? The thing I've most enjoyed is just seeing loads of new places and meeting lots of new people. New things, fresh things in the mind are always exciting. So all this new scenery, new place to sleep every night, new people to meet up with, new languages to learn, it's all very exciting. I think that's what I've enjoyed most. In terms of the end goal of the van life project, I don't really think about end goals too much anymore. Don't, I don't really have an end goal. I just want to enjoy it and uh, take it all in while it's happening. Noodles on my phone. Hi Alex, if you weren't a YouTuber, where would you be and what would you be doing? Well, at the beginning of this year when I quit my old job working with my brother, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I would probably be a taxi driver or like an Uber driver. I did all the tests online to qualify to become an Uber driver because I really quite like driving. So whilst I was starting the YouTube channel, I was also applying to become an Uber driver, but then the YouTube channel kind of worked out quite well and people enjoyed the videos. So yeah, I didn't end up doing that. But yeah, probably a taxi driver. Anything with the van that you would change. I'd quite like to put some decorations on the van because currently it just looks like a box of wood inside. It doesn't exactly look very nice. So yeah, maybe I would make some changes to the, the niceness of the inside and make it a, a prettier, nicer look. I would make the van twice as big on the inside, but the same size on the outside. My van is the perfect size to drive around, but it's too small on the inside. Lots of people said get a transporter or a bigger one. Yeah, maybe I should have done. I would have a bigger bed. Another one about the van, what's the best thing and the worst thing about your van? The best thing is my fridge and this pull-out drawer. The worst thing is the height of the ceiling and the accuracy of the woodwork. Is there anything you've forgotten? I forgot to bring the correct charger for my electric shaver for my 
face hair. So at some point when that runs out, my hair's gonna start getting long and it's not gonna look too good. Where do you poo? Mostly McDonald's toilets, but occasionally in the woods. What did you do regarding insurance and breakdown cover? My insurance company, I just let them know that I was going to Europe. They have a policy where they allow you to be in each country of Europe for like 30 days and fully insured. Breakdown cover, I had to get an extra AA breakdown cover, which I got for a month. And I'm gonna have to renew that because looks like I'm gonna be out here for longer than that period of time. What is your main focus of the trip? When I started this road trip, I really didn't have a clue. I was just sort of going into Europe in my van. I just wanted to sleep in my van a few times, to be honest, and then I would have been happy. But then it kind of turned into more of an adventure. I started interacting with people on my Instagram page and some of the people who follow me. And now the focus of the trip is kind of to meet up with as many new people as possible. And learn as much about all the different places that I visit because it's so much more enjoyable going to a new place but meeting up with someone who knows something about it because if I just walk into a city without any idea of the place it can be very daunting and it feel very small and um, scary but as soon as you go with a the local they can point out things and teach you about things and it's uh, always more enjoyable so yeah the, the, the main focus of this trip is to meet new people and learn new things. I'm going to finish off these noodles. Whenever I park up, I try to find somewhere which is near water because it means I can do washing up. Because in my van, I've only got a very limited water supply and I haven't got a sink. Every time I find a river, I use the opportunity to wash stuff up. I'm going to get an early night, I think. Strawberry milkshake, yum. There's not many things more cozy than lying down in my bed in the back of my van. It's even more cozy when there's a storm going on outside and you can hear the rain on the roof. Someone has asked, how are your travels funded? Before I went on these travels, I sold my old business that I had been working on for a number of years, which gave me some money to play around with. But I have a small income from these YouTube videos that I make, uh, which helps pay for the traveling currently. So that is how I managed to pay for this fun. What motivated you to do this trip and what are you going to do after? I think the idea of going on a big traveling adventure in a van is just something which has always quite excited me. I watched lots of other YouTubers go on traveling adventures in a van. That kind of inspired me. Lots of people have been wondering how much an adventure like this costs. It depends on lots of things because if you go to two Michelin star restaurants every night, then it's gonna be a lot more expensive than if you buy just a big bulk bag of pasta and have pasta sauce and pasta every night. I'm gonna do some quick calculations. Okay, I've spent about £450 on fuel in the last month. And that has taken me from South England all the way through France, Germany, Switzerland, Slovenia, Austria. And I'm starting to come back up now. So say I carry on and do a similar route back home, I would probably end up spending like £800 on fuel for a round trip like this. And since I left home from England, I've spent about one and a half thousand pounds. That is food, toll roads, accommodation at a couple of different places, um, fuel and some luxury things as well, like a two Michelin star restaurant. Have you learned anything new about yourself since starting your van adventures? Yeah, I've learned an awful lot about myself. Things which are quite hard to explain, but yes, I have. I would definitely suggest going on a crazy adventure, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone because that is one of the best ways to learn stuff about yourself. Do something that challenges you and pushes you to your limits and you learn a lot that way. Well, now that it gets dark so early in the evening, it gives me a lot of time to sit down and do editing and do computer stuff.
Good morning. I have a business meeting this morning. <laughs> uh, one of the ways that I earn some money for this YouTube channel is doing some like brand deals. So putting ads in the videos. And I got a meeting. This is going to be the first meeting I've had in my van. Got to look awake for this meeting. Don't want to look like I just woke up after a night camping in my van. Mm. I'm ready. The only way of heating my van is by turning on the engine and putting on the heating, which is a bit annoying. I think I maybe should get some sort of heater in the back. I just don't have much room and I don't want to get any more things that take up space. It's getting colder. All right, cool starts in five minutes. I will let you know how it goes. Business meeting went well. <laughs> I had to explain where I was because um, it doesn't exactly look like a normal office. It's time to move on again. I'm going to head a little bit north towards Prague. Well, I'm gonna meet up with some people and they're gonna show me around the city. And also, I think I'm going to a brewery, the Pilsen Brewery. Hopefully do some beer tasting and learn about how beer is made. On the road again. On the road again. On the road again. My name's Alex and one month ago I left my home in England to go on the biggest road trip of my life. I converted this van into a little camper, so I've got a bed, a place to sit and work, electricity supply where I can run my lights, and I've got a fridge as well, which I'm super happy about. This is my route so far. This morning I made my way up to Berlin in Germany, but for the past few days, in fact, the last week I've been in Czech Republic. It's a country which I had never visited before until last week. So I want to tell you a bit about my time there. Where am I? I can't pronounce any of the names. I'm near Seski Budajovice. For the next day and night, I'm going to be a forest dweller. Another day, another camp spot. And I'm in my office. I need to figure out a comfortable position to work in as well because my back is currently painful. Snacks, bread. Yum. Got most of my editing done, so I'm celebrating. By eating these shortbread chocolatey sandwich things. It looks like they've got jam in the middle. Mmm. It's turning into winter, but I got a saucepan full of pasta, so it's all okay. It's also just started raining, so I'm going to eat this, get inside my house, do a bit more work, go to bed, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. So I slept the night in a forest, which was really peaceful, completely silent, apart from the sound of owls in the woods. And then the next morning, I needed to do some grocery shopping and then I had to cook some breakfast. We're gonna meet up with some new people. I'm so happy. I've spent the last few days on my own and I'm just gets a bit lonely, I guess. So it's gonna be nice. Good to meet you. Hi. Uh, Philip, yeah? Yep. What's the plan? The plan was to firstly get fed a load of nice food by Philip's grandparents. I didn't think I'd arrive and get a three course <laughs> meal. <laughs> Jeez, people look after me too well. Is it because you feel sorry for me? This is it having to sleep in my van for the past <laughs> month. This guy, needs, this guy needs a proper <laughs> meal. And then go mushroom foraging, fishing, and then finally head to Prague for a tour around the city. Just met up with Philip and he took me into his grandparents' place. They gave me some really nice food and now we're off mushroom foraging. Off to the forest. 
A full car of mushroom people. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Mushroom foraging again. Nice basket, I like it. Yeah, I think there's nothing better than walking into the woods with <laughs> some baskets and collecting yeah. mushrooms. It's so much fun. Beautiful. Yes. It looks so cool. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's, in England, we call winter chanterelles. They've got like a yellow stem. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> cute. <laughs> it's really cute, yeah. Nice. They must be quite tricky to spot though sometimes because they have got really yeah, dark. Yeah, yeah, really dark. Yeah. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Yeah, I can count to five now. Wow. The leg is so massive. We've lost Philip's grandma. Oh no. And we're whistling to her like a dog. Update on the lost grandma. I think we <laughs> think we found her. Yay, we found everyone. Oh wow. Nice. <laughs> Four happy mushroom foragers. After mushroom foraging, Philip took me to his local river spot where we did some fishing. I just walked to get in the car because I was going to be a passenger, but then I realized I am in Europe and they drive on the other side. That's your seat. <laughs> we are fishing in the river. Fish! <laughs> I just caught that one fish. I caught it straight away. We cast out the rods, caught one, and then we sat there for the rest of the evening and then didn't catch any more. We headed back to Philip's grandparents' place where we had loads more nice food and a good night's sleep. So tomorrow we're gonna go to Prague? Yep. Nice, for a little city tour, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But first we feast. <laughs> Something which keeps surprising me and makes me incredibly happy is the people I'm meeting are so kind. Philip and his grandparents uh, are letting me stay in their house tonight in this huge bed. Look at that, it's big enough for like 10 people. Um, and they're sorting me out with food and a wash in their shower. It's amazing. It's making this life on the road and traveling life just 10 times better. So <laughs> thank you everyone that I've met along the way. This family is trying to fatten me up. <laughs> Cake, scrambled egg and bread for breakfast. Welcome to City Tours with Alex and Philip. Today we're going to be exploring Prague. Exploring the city was really fun. Philip showed me the old town and both of the squares which were just full of beautiful buildings. Walked across the river. <laughs> saw an animal called a koi poo uh, swimming up the river, which I did not expect to see. And of course, we also drank beer and had some really nice food. Cheers. Cheers. I love how they put it in like jugs. <laughs> That's a quarter of a duck. Potato dumplings, Sorry. those we've had yesterday. Dumplings. Cabbage, Another some sort cabbage. of sauce, more cabbage, and then these are like onion, onions, crispy yeah. onions. Oh, wow. <laughs> Food gets me way too excited. Thanks, Philip, and all your family for being so welcoming. Back on the road after a couple of really fun days with Philip. Now I'm heading to the city of Pilsen in Czech Republic, and I'm going to a brewery to drink some beer. But first, I wanted to do some shopping. It's turning cold outside now, so I need to get some warm clothes. And that's why today I find myself in a big shopping center. I normally don't like these sorts of places. They're busy and I don't like shopping, unless it's for food. So we'll see how we get on. Hmm. I might get a scarf. I want a jumper. What type of bike shall I get? Shall I get a skateboard instead? Oh, I hate shopping. I, what, I, I just want a hoodie, which is nice. So I don't have to wear this every single day of my life. Seriously though, if there's any bike people following this channel, um, let me know what type of bike I should get. 
Like, I, I think I want something in between a mountain bike and a road bike, something that you can use sort of everywhere. I kind of want a bike like this with a nice basket on the front. Right, I'm not getting a skateboard, they don't have brakes. After absolutely failing with some shopping, I met up with a couple of brothers, Pavel and Alish, and they were super kind and said that they would take me to the local brewery. So we went to Pilsen Brewery for a tour around the place. This place has got lots of beer. There's beer on the floor. <laughs> And we also saw the bottling line, like where they bottle up all the beer, ready for distribution. Distribution, And that was super interesting. Mmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. And then we went out for a meal in Pilsen. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> what are we eating today? Switchkova. Svichkova. Typical chicken. Traditional food. And it's dumplings. Dumplings and beef. Beef and, and a sauce made of vegetables. Mm. We have a, a cream and a cranberry kind of sauce. Yum. And lemon, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Let's feast. I'm here in the pills in Main Square, and apparently, if I touch this angel and hold it and make a wish, it'll come true. <laughs> Another day of meeting new people. See ya! And now I'm getting in my van to carry on my long road trip around Europe. Next stop, Berlin. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. And darling, darling, stand by me. And then I drove about four and a half, five hours from Czech Republic to Berlin, where I am now, and the adventure continues. Last week, I got the chance to meet a guy called Moritz, who is absolutely mad about mushrooms. The aim was to go foraging for wild mushrooms. <laughs> Look at these ones. Learn about some different species. It actually smells of garlic. As well as cook up a mushroom feast. What's the better like? That one? Or that one? That one? Or that one? Hey there everyone, my name's Alex and I'm currently travelling around Europe in my van. I've just spent the last week in Czech Republic and I've just driven up through into Germany. I have a problem with my van. Whilst driving earlier, two warning lights came on. One of my lights is broken, I think it's the one of the back brake lights. And also the engine warning light came on. So that's a problem because if the engine goes, then my road trip ends. So I need to find a garage to take my van to and get it checked out. Good night. Hello. It just rained like crazy. Yeah, I drove through it on the way okay, here. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Uh, it, it was like really like thunder and lightning. <laughs> yeah. Um, Look at this shit. I just bought this. Whoa, this is so crazy. <laughs> like a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> I didn't use it yet. So are you a mushroom nerd? Yeah, I'm like crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> First thing I'm drinking <laughs> is a mushroom drink. This is chaga, right? This is chaga. Chaga. Yeah. Chaga lava, yeah. It looks like a nice day. Hey, it's really nice out, oh, yeah. Nice it's been raining, again. some of the mushrooms have been feeding. I'm Moritz, I'm 42 years old. I'm really passionate about mushrooms, as you can tell. I founded a company that does mushroom drinks. Let's say functional mushrooms such as reishi, chaga, cordyceps and heritium. We mix it with chocolate, with coffee and with tea. Um, so it's mushrooms that do, do you good, that are good for you that improve your health and I'm a total mushroom head. Like I go <laughs> foraging every day, I go into the woods, look for cool stuff and I also do photography with mushrooms or mushroom art as you might want to call it. And you have the, the best mushroom Instagram account in the world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Go do follow me. <laughs> Thanks, yeah guys, follow me on Insta. Okay, get it out, give it a little shake and then maybe 
Yep. Look wow. At this. It's crazy, right? And that's all the spores. Yeah, it's, that's all the spores. Mm. That's how they. That's how they do it. And this is really tasty. It's a mushroom that not everybody would pick. It's nice with the light too. <laughs> what did you call it? A donkey ear. Yeah, donkey donkey's ear. ear yeah. Looks kind of like a donkey ear. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna take some of these. Donkey ear. Boom. There's mushrooms everywhere. Just ta da! Look, That's so cool. Do, do they it, do eh? they sense that something's yeah? They sense them up the movement. They... Yeah. I need to multiply. Wow! wow I've that, never yeah, seen a mushroom so do that. Crazy, eh? Our mushroom foraging just never gets boring. Like until today, I I never knew a mushroom could do that. So I caught some fish in Norway the other day. Um, cod. We're gonna have cod with a, a mushroom crust on top of it. We're gonna make it in the oven. So I'm gonna mix these mushrooms with some breadcrumbs and then put it on top. And then we're gonna have some pumpkin, like some grilled pumpkin, some pumpkin like mash uh, or like pumpkin sauce. Then I'm gonna have a mushroom jus, like a really nice sauce that I'm gonna start cooking once we get back. Uh, and we're gonna have some mashed potatoes. You sound like a good chef. Did I hear something about you winning a winning Shut a TV up. show? <laughs> yeah, like back in the days. What was it? That was Come Dine With Me. <laughs> back wow. in the days. Yeah, I mean, I used to cook a lot and I'm still into cooking. And it was more of a joke, you know. I was like, okay, I can do what they can do. And I won this TV show. Yeah, was cool. Amazing. Yeah, was cool. So yeah, I like to cook. And I mean, the best thing is um, to find your own food and then eat it or like catch your own food and then it, I think it has a like more of a value to you. Oh no, it's a panther. Uh, not a panther, a pear pit. Um, Is it edible? Yeah, that's it's a edible. Blush. Yes, oh, yeah, it's a blusher. Yeah, a blusher, yeah. I never have eaten those ones because I'm always too scared. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's nothing for beginners, I would say, yeah. because if you get, if you mix it up, then you'll die. Ringloser Butterpilz in German and in English, uh, in Latin it's Zuilus Colinitos and it's a very tasty mushroom it's really good the thing is about these mushrooms they're very slimy the, like the cap is always very slimy so you peel off the top and then it's a great mushroom that you can easily use but this is really slimy and sticky if you don't peel it off uh, you'll get the shits too so so this all gonna make a really nice sauce for our, for our meal that we're gonna cook mm. yes you found some? Oh yeah, I just stepped on one. Yeah. Nice! Very well spotted. When you cut it, there's orange milk coming out. Also your um, urine <laughs> turns orange if you eat a lot of them. So don't worry if your piss turns orange tomorrow, like you're not ill. So beautiful. But where there's one, there's usually more. So it's always worth checking the surroundings. Everything's orange in this basket. Yeah. It's funny, eh? You would think uh, yeah. there's just one mushroom there, yeah. but there's actually another one there's hiding underneath another, it. Yeah. Mm. Once you try this mushroom, you, this is gonna be one of your favorite mushrooms. There's like 260 species of Russula. There's poisonous ones that wouldn't kill you, but it's not good for you, and they get just really spicy. Yeah. And there's uh, non-poisonous ones. So what you do is you cut out a little piece of the mushroom either from the stem or the cap and you just chew on it here yeah, you can have both <laughs> and then after a while it should either stay mild after like 15 seconds or it gets really spicy so after doing the taste test we know that these are edible so they're gonna go in our food tonight more of these milk cats with the orange milk that comes out. I mean, it's not actually milk, it's some other thing. Look, my fingers have got it on now. Orange fingers. Lots of people say they are like the nicest mushroom, so I'm excited to try them. We call them Violetta Lacktrichterling. <laughs> Look how German that sounds. Violetta Lacktrichterling. <laughs> but they are so beautiful and they're also edible. So, um, yeah, you can eat them. Thing is, you shouldn't eat too many of them. They tend to 
have uh, Quicksilver and like they okay. capture radiation and then yeah I heard people say good. like don't have too many yeah exactly but I love them I love how they look I would love to put a band aid on actually do you want to see this so this that's is... the tip of my finger I just cut this off look at the white stuff ah <laughs> I just gotta hold up my thumb all night long. Okay, I think I'm good now. <laughs> Not everything is going to plan. We found loads of mushrooms, that went well. The chopping of vegetables didn't end well. So you're putting some dried mushrooms in as well? Yeah, some fully eaten mushrooms, dried. They have a lot of flavor. So I'm going to use some glue vine. <laughs> do you know that? Glue vine? Yeah, do you know glue vine? I mean, I've had glue vine at the Christmas market. Exactly. But I thought it actually might be nice because it has some some cloves in it and, you know, like some special oh, spices. spices. Yeah. I think I'm also going to add some chaga mushroom to give it like a little earthiness and some darker color. So we're going to have a very dark brown sauce tomorrow. So we're going to let this soak for a long time. And then yeah. tomorrow we will finish off the rest of the meal as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to fish. We're going to do the fish, the pumpkin, the potatoes. Uh, kale. Oh yeah, the kale. Kale chips. It's just a little topping, a little fancy topping. And yeah, it's going to be really nice. It's important. More and more and more. More is more. Everything you can find in yeah, your kitchen. Yeah, just throw it in there. there. <laughs> Whatever it is. Uh, maybe some coriander seeds. And that's it. That's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> After adding about a hundred different ingredients to the sauce, we sat back, chilled out, and let the saucepan sit for the next 24 hours. So that's my book. That's the book I wrote like three years ago. It's about looking for mushrooms in the woods and finding not only mushrooms but happiness rather than just mushrooms. Then I got interviews with friends of mine that talk about mushrooms or talk about the forest and what the forest um, does to them. This is my book. Go get it on the internet. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Down to the mushroom cave. Yep. Uh, this is where, where I do my mushroom photography, in my basement. I'm working on this chess game at the moment. I built this, it's metal, good versus bad, or poisonous versus uh, non-poisonous. When I walk down into Moritz's man cave mushroom cellar thing, uh, I didn't expect him to have a chess game set up with mushrooms. So you can um, you can get like a picture in your head maybe. These are the bullets and then on this side it's gonna be the amanitas facing each other. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> you gotta have a hobby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well before I photographed mushrooms I was a, or I used to be or I still am like an advertising photographer I learned at like a really high-end studio, like maybe the best studio in Germany, and a, a guy called, called Uwe Duttmann, he's like an icon. And then I traveled the world for 20 years, worked in, lived in South Africa, New York, and Paris, wherever, and like um, worked for big magazines like GQ magazines, worked for Mercedes, BMW, whatever, like, and it got me kind of tired after a while because I didn't see like, I don't know, it wasn't fulfilling me and then um, I turned away from it a little bit and like turned myself more towards nature and find, found my happiness with mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, I'm still doing my photography in, in my basement. I don't have a studio anymore. Yeah, here's where I get creative with my mushrooms. I also work like outside. Oh, that's actually wine from the wine that we have in the garden. I'm waiting for it to be good. Wait, you made wine? Yeah, I made wine. Well, you I'm have trying. some grapes outside. Yeah, I had some grapes outside. So I'm also like into harvesting what I find in my garden. There's actually wine from last year. It looks shit, but it's good. It looks very chaotic. I'm not a messy, I swear. <laughs> but you have to keep it somewhere. <laughs> Go upstairs where it's tidy. Too much time down here yeah. might drive a man crazy. Exactly. 
Are you going to turn off the light? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Moritz actually sells some of his photos on an online store, so check out the link in the description to see them. It was now time to go foraging some more mushrooms for our meal tonight. Yeah, we found them in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> You can eat them when they're white inside. This one is too Ooh. old. Yeah. So this one, I mean, it's tiny, but we're still gonna take it. Yes! That's the one we're looking for. Well, we call it Red Cat. Oh, I love this. It's like one of the most beautiful and the best tasting mushrooms. Okay, so it's Lexinum leucopodium. It lives in a symbiosis with these trees. They are similar to a birch tree, but they are not a birch tree. I think uh, we call them aspen. Yeah, we yeah. do. Aspen. And that's why we call this one aspen red cap. Ah. Because, yeah, they live only where these trees are. So I'm always looking for these trees. And I love these trees when it's windy. Because there's a saying in German, like if somebody's shivering, he say, you're shivering like asp, uh, like asp leaves. And look at them, they're like really shivering like crazy. It's cool. <laughs> this looks cool. Especially if you look like for a certain mushroom and it's not just a random mushroom. And I was really like looking for especially these ones right now because I wanted to use them in the food. It's the most satisfying feeling ever, you know. I mean, that's the good thing about foraging for mushrooms. Any mushroom that you find, it gives you like, I don't know, hormones that make you feel happy and you're always happy. You're just like happy 300 times a day if you find 300 mushrooms. But then if, you find, if you're looking for a special one, it's even better, like, if, I don't know, I can't really describe it. Can't put it in words, but it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> Love it. That's yeah. another one. Let me clean this one. Present for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought mushroom foraging can bring a man so much happiness? We got two more. These are gonna go in our food tonight. So cool. Some mushrooms just grow like aliens. They do. Whoa. So now we got enough mushrooms for our sauce. Hey, look at this. It's like the perfect example of how they should look. I always do this to check if they are still good. And also like push this, push in there. If there's like a dent that's uh, staying, then you can tell they're no good. But this one is perfect. There's like no maggots or anything in there. The mushrooms just keep surprising me. We just found a mushroom which smells of garlic, so we can add it to our food and um, makes our food garlicky. Pretty cool. This, is this the one? Yeah. This is the garlic mushroom. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's actually called the garlic mushroom. Yeah, is it? Like the garlic mushroom. It actually smells of garlic. Mushrooms are crazy! The mushrooms make you crazy. It made Moritz crazy. And if you're not careful, it might make you crazy too. So there's three growing in a row in a perfect line. And it's quite interesting, like the mycelium that grows underground grows around this tree, lives in a symbiosis with this tree and it really goes around the tree. We found some mushrooms over there, but this is like the perfect example um, if you want to explain how the mycelium grows, you know, like it comes from the tree, it grows around the tree and it's sometimes really like in one line and then the, the fruit bodies, as we call them, they pop up and yeah, they're all very nice. We're gonna pick them, close this again so that the mycelium doesn't get hurt. Might get hurt by light and also by sun it can dry out so it's always important that you close this again boom three mushrooms boom four mushrooms this guy can talk for uh months about mushrooms <laughs> if you leave him to it we're not gonna eat those ones obviously but 
This is more than enough for a little crust on the fish. <laughs> Just had a really good forage in the woods. We're gonna go back home now and uh, put together some food. Okay. Kale to make nice chips. There's a nice little topping for the food. And since it's growing here, we might as well use it. Have you had kale chips? No. Put it in the oven with some oil and some um, herbs. And they go crispy? Yeah, they go crispy and it's really nice. nice. Oh. Let's start cooking. So that's the sauce mixture from yesterday. Yes. And we're gonna put it through a sieve and yeah. get out all the bits and pieces. Yeah, the mushrooms and the seaweed and the bacon and whatever is in there. Everything in the world. Cool. All that goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. It's just so much flavor. We cut up a pumpkin. Half was going to be pureed with some carrots and the other half we were going to grill. Next, we made a breadcrumb mixture with blended up bread, mushrooms, parsley, lemon, and butter. Ta-da! Breadcrumb! Yay! This was hopefully going to add a crunchy topping to the fish. Never done this with mushrooms. Am I gonna be okay? Oh no, it's oh, nice. Whoa. Oh, whoa. That's actually cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on top of the fish. Okay, yeah. Put it in the oven, and then the butter melts and also um, crisps, up, crisps up the bread and the mushrooms. I think it's gonna be nice, I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> Potatoes were also part of the meal, and we were going to prepare some for roasting and some for mashed potato. Put a knife or like a, a stick in there so that you don't cut all the way through. Oh, clever. And it opens up once you put it in the oven. You found a nice little place to sleep. You see you can stay in there. <laughs> <laughs> you go for a walk with Pro chef over there cooking up dinner whilst I just sit here eating crisps. <laughs> How can you? Mm. Oh, okay, I think these are about ready already. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mushroom crust on top of Norway um, fish. Yeah. A minute to the grill. <laughs> Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Crispy kale. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. Light. Yeah. Yeah. What <laughs> just happened, dude? Okay, the plates are not heated, which is a big fail. Explain what we have here. Okay, so we got my plaster on my finger, which is really dirty. And then we got some really nice fish. I think it's cod that I caught in Norway. Then we got the bolete mushrooms. We got a, a, a crust made out of mushrooms and breadcrumbs. We got some pumpkin mixed with carrots. We got this beautiful sauce that I cooked for 24 hours. A lot of mushrooms and all kinds of stuff in it. Then we got the mashed potatoes. Um, we got some pumpkins from the grill. 
some other potatoes, and that's about it. First for me, as I'm very polite to say. Mmm, yum. Mmm. Ah, cheers. Cheers. Imagine if it just tasted horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it will, <don't> <laughs> It's got half your good. thumb in it. I know. <laughs> wow. I think the sauce is the best bet. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Right. Well done, Chef. Thank you. Mm. It doesn't look nice, but it tastes great. Oh, that was some of the best days of my road trip around Europe. I have got to get these warning lights checked up on. Um, Moritz gave me an address for one of his friends who is a mechanic and he might be able to see what the problem is. And then I'm going to drive to Denmark, which is like a long way. Let's see what the problem is. So there's like a computer which you can plug in? Yeah. Wow. Wow, was that a Shitty. DFS. No, glow, glow, plug. glow plug. Okay, bye. A glow plug is a heating element that heats incoming fuel and air to encourage fuel combustion in the diesel engine. I can still drive my car. And when it's cold, apparently, it might take a while to, to start the engine. But other than that, Apparently it's not much of a problem. So that is wonderful. I need to find my way to Denmark. Six hours. Let's go. My name's Alex and I'm currently traveling around Europe. I've mostly been traveling in my van and living in my van, but I have occasionally got accommodation. And today is one of those lucky days where I am staying in a house. Well, I'm actually staying in like this building in someone's garden in Denmark. But in this video, I want to tell you about the last few days because I drove from Germany, uh, Berlin, where I spent a couple of days uh, mushroom foraging and cooking with a guy called Moritz. That was so much fun. Uh, but now I had to make my way up north into Denmark. Fun, fun, fun on the Autobahn. Couldn't be more different to where I was a few weeks ago. I was in the Alps where there's mountains and big hills. And here, in north of Germany, I'm heading towards Hamburg now. It's really flat and there's wind turbines. Oh, and a field full of pumpkins. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Tried to spit a grape seed out. Put it didn't work very well. Just filled up with fuel. Cost me 120 euros to fill up my tank from zero to full. Currently eating some grapes. <laughs> Got to spit out all the seeds because they're really bitter and horrible. No, wait, so Got to keep driving. Today I'm eating Pringles. And BW put a perfect little Pringle holder in their van. It's brilliant thinking. And it just slots in there. Well, oh, that's not gonna move. Even if I crash, that is not getting damaged at all. And you can just pick the Pringles out. It's pretty, pretty sweet, in my honest opinion. I'm kind of feeling a bit ill. My head hurts and all my bones ache. I feel a bit dizzy. Uh, it could be the water, because I filled this water bottle up, I can't even talk. Filled this water bottle up three weeks ago and I'm still drinking the same water. Is that bad? It smells kind of weird. No light could have got in the bottle, so no algae or plants are growing in there but there could be some other stuff which doesn't need light which is growing inside this bottle um anyone here who knows the scientific nature of a water bottle let me know if i should stop drinking that uh, could of course be a poisonous mushroom that i've eaten in the last few days because i have just been eating mushrooms every day 
bound to get one mixed up at some point, I suppose. I'm putting it down to the nearly month old water. We're in Denmark! I don't know why, but it always feels like such an achievement when you see the, the new countryside. You're like, yes, completed the game, completed the level. Let's find somewhere to sleep. I'm in the forest. Good thing about these little jars of pasta is that there's enough for two servings. About four days ago I had the top half, put it in the fridge, and now today I can have the bottom half. It's so silent in the woods here tonight. I think I might know what was giving me some illness today. I had a basket which had a few mushrooms in that I collected like last week, and they had gone really moldy and old, and there were spores like going everywhere. So I think maybe I've been breathing in spores. I still feel hungry, so it can't be like a really bad illness. Well, I've just been trying to get to sleep. But I've been feeling a little bit ill. And I had a message from a guy who I've been speaking to on Instagram, who is actually a forest nature reserve ranger in Denmark. He's just down the road and he just sent me a message saying, do I want to go looking for invasive raccoon dogs i don't even know what to think um what is a raccoon dog firstly um and shall i go out tonight i guess he's like hunting them because they're invasive um but look at me i'm all tucked up ready for bed just decided i'm going looking for raccoon dogs what's going on with my life so that night I met up with a guy called Gyuke and we walked across the fields in complete darkness looking for raccoon dogs. These animals were originally introduced for their nice fur, uh, but now they're invasive. So one of Gyuke's jobs is to control the amount of these animals and uh, keep them under control. It felt really exciting to be walking around the fields in the middle of the night, kind of spooky too. But uh, I got really excited when Gyuke pulled out this thermal imaging device, which you could look through and find where animals were. We saw quite a few deer, but unfortunately that night, no raccoon dogs were found. So we went back to Gyuke's place. I slept in my van outside his house. And the next morning I was greeted with some fresh eggs for breakfast. Eggs. <laughs> for your breakfast. Oh, nice. <laughs> After eating, Gyuke gave me a little tour of the surrounding land where he works and I even got to drive a quad bike for the first time which was so much fun. Whilst driving the quad we hopped across the German border and immediately got pulled over by the German police. Luckily we weren't in trouble and Gyuke and the officer actually ended up having a long conversation about hunting and uh, they seemed to get on really well. At first though I was pretty scared. I was thinking was I going too fast? Do I even have a license to drive this thing? But no, everything was okay. I couldn't believe the amount of wildlife here. There were peregrine falcons, eagles, thousands of ducks and geese, deer and so much more. This place was windy, wild and full of life. Back at the house, we ate some locally shot roe deer before going out again in the evening. <laughs> it's a beast. And it's so tasty. So sweet. Mm. Let's go hunt some, what were you hunting? Geese. Geese, yeah. We walked out into the fields, sat behind a hay bale and waited for some ducks or geese to fly over. Gyuke also did some incredible duck impressions, which were very realistic. <laughs> Gyuke's aiming is incredible. He managed to shoot a goose and a duck whilst they were flying over. It was pretty amazing to witness and it meant we had some food to eat for the next few days. The next morning we plucked and cleaned the birds. 
I left Duque's place with so much nice, fresh, local food. I had eggs from their chickens, I had locally shot red deer mints, and of course I had two goose breasts that uh, we had shot the evening before. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Oh, some more wonderful people in the world. And I'm on my way now to the other side of Denmark, where I've got an Airbnb that I'm gonna stay in. The back of my van is looking incredibly messy right now. I'm on a bridge right now, and then it goes to that little island over there. And then from that island, there's another bridge which goes on to another island. Wow. There must be many happy fishes in there, swimming around. Having a fun time. See you in Copenhagen, folks. I'm staying in an actual building. This will be fun. It doesn't have a kitchen. It just has like a sink. So I'm still going to cook in my car. For now though, just gonna chill out, take it easy. Look at that Danish pink foot goose. So whilst driving yesterday, I was trying to think of what I should cook up. And I find it really hard to come up with ideas of things to cook. Like most days I sit at home and I'm like, what should I make today? And I just spend sometimes hours not getting anywhere. And then I end up just having a bowl of pasta with some tomato sauce as usual. But I thought I'm gonna work with the ingredients that I've got. And what do I have? I have a breast of goose and I have a load of apples. So I'm going to attempt frying this goose breast and making a nice crispy skin and also an apple and wine pan sauce. And I can add some butter and then I don't have any garlic but I've got some ginger which might work, I don't know. And I've also got some lettuce and mint to go with it. Firstly I've got to season the goose. I witnessed this thing get shot out the air. I want to dry off the meat a bit because I want it to go crispy and it can only go crispy if there's not loads of water. And then a generous amount of salt. Apple. I think it'll go well. Ginger and apple. Mm. I've got some butter which I'll use to cook everything in. This is what I've been cooking on in my van for the past month and a half. It's just a butane propane mixture gas bottle with a little portable gas stove, which is really neat. It works very well so far. I've got this stainless steel pan, which I found really good for like searing steak. And I think it will be perfect for getting a crispy skin on this goose breast. And then we want this pan super hot. Gonna add some pepper as well to the goose. Are you ready for this to splatter everywhere? Oh! Yeah, that's like on the edge of being burned. That's look, that, that, that looks good. Feel like a pro chef now. I'm basting the goose breast with butter. Ah, oil everywhere. I wanna try a bit of this crispiness. Yeah, that's amazing. It tastes more like a steak than a bird. Okay, we want this piece of meat to be kind of rare in the middle. I've heard it's good for it to be kind of still pretty pink. So we're gonna take that off. It's still very squishy. Now we're gonna make our pan sauce. I'm gonna put in the apple because it might take a bit of time for the apple to soften. That apple came from Czech Republic. 
from Philip's grandparents' garden. Got some wine. I'm gonna evaporate like all the alcohol so I just have the flavor. Forgot the bloody ginger, didn't I? A little bit of honey. How do I do this? With my finger? Little bit of mint, apple sauce. It's a little bit chewy and I probably overcooked it a little bit, but it is still delicious. Like, it, it tastes very good. The mint goes well with it. The ginger in the sauce, not so good. If you want to keep up to date with my travels, head over to my Instagram. Um, I post more regularly on there. And also my videos are always like a week or two delayed after I film them. So on my Instagram, I post like present day stuff. So go check that out if you want. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. I think next I'm gonna go to Netherlands. Tomorrow I will have the very rare lucky opportunity to learn how to cook from a pro chef. A guy who works at a restaurant in the Netherlands messaged me on Instagram the other week and asked me whether I'd like to learn some cooking skills. I went on his Instagram page and realized he works for what looks like a very top, high quality restaurant. So of course I took up the offer and here I am. I'm currently staying in a hotel just next door to the restaurant tonight. This morning I left Denmark. Heading to the Netherlands for one last fun adventure before I have to decide whether I either go to a non-Schengen country to allow me to stay in Europe longer or whether I go back to England. It's been really toying on my mind because I miss my friends and family and I want to go back to England for a bit. But I also kind of want to go to Croatia and keep this fun adventure going. I'll decide that tomorrow or the day after. It was a nine hour long journey. Drove loads through Denmark, then got on a ferry, which I wasn't expecting to do. And we're on a boat. The ferry went from Denmark to Germany and then I drove another I think five or six hours from the ferry crossing to where I am now. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to learn from a pro chef and cook in a professional kitchen. Stay tuned because this is going to be a fun little adventure. The next morning I realised it wasn't just one chef I was going to meet, it was four of the kitchen team. So that's where you grow vegetables for your cooking? Yeah. Housia James. <laughs> and these are all the people that work there? Yeah. <laughs> Housia means house. House. Okay, James, James house. house. James House. Yeah. So the chefs cook and then people can sit around here? Yeah. yeah. No way. This is so cool. This feels so cozy. And it's just like a dream come true looking inside a... <laughs> Like a proper restaurant. <laughs> this is so exciting. Look at this place. <laughs> it looks like a, out of a fairy tale. After a coffee and a quick tour around the restaurant, it was time to set off and start gathering ingredients for the three course meal we were going to cook up tonight. That's not what we're going to be driving around in today. Really? Old school Land Rovers. Wow. Are we going bird watching? Could we could. <laughs> <laughs> These guys know what they're doing when it comes to cooking and food and working in a kitchen. So today we're gonna we're gonna learn from them. Off we go to the trout farm to try and catch a fish. Oh yes, 
<laughs> One more. Hey. Hallo, yes, hey. thank you. Yes, very nice. Drive through. <laughs> Nice job, driver. <laughs> nearly didn't make it. <laughs> the back door opened while I was driving on the road and then a car nearly swerved into us. It was an exciting ride, I have to say. Meet the team. My name is Robin and I'm a cook. My name is Lawrence and I'm the chef of House James. I'm Rick and I'm uh, also chef of House James. And I'm Jessica and I'm working with these amazing guys by House of James. My name's Alex and I make YouTube videos. <laughs> Today we're gonna be finding ingredients uh, catching fish, foraging, getting some food from the vegetable garden and also I'm going to be learning how uh, they cook up some amazing food. Yeah. Welcome, we're at uh, Smallet in Emst. Uh, it's a little town uh, in the middle of uh, the Veluwe. Um, we're producing trout here for over 100 years. I'm uh, uh, the third person in our family who is running the business over here. And you can catch your own fish over here. So we produce a lot of fish, so people can come here and uh, with their rods, they can catch their own fish. Can I catch a fish today? Yeah, you can. I, I've got some uh, some rods over here, oh, so wow. I, I think you can. Our aim this morning is to catch a fish. Thank you. We've all got a fishing rod each. <laughs> this is the lure. I'm going to cast this into the pond. The trout is going to think that's a piece of food, but it's not going to be a piece of food. It's got a hook on it. I think this is all a big prank. He, he doesn't actually have any fish in this no, pond. <laughs> How's the fishing going? Not so good at the moment. Yeah, they are not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> oh yeah, we've got a fish. No! We nearly had dinner, guys. I lost it. What, what did I do wrong? Damn it, no! So close. Three days later, and I've got another one. Yes! Yay! <laughs> Fish! <laughs> we got dinner, guys. What next? Mushrooms? Meat. Ah, butcher. We're gonna go to the butcher. Challenge one complete. Did you have fun fishing? Yes, yes. It was very funny. <laughs> They're not very hungry, but uh, yeah. Of course, you take uh, one fish. It's <laughs> then we have enough. <laughs> yeah. We take it to home. So that's a trout which yeah. I caught yeah. and you're also taking some yeah. uh, smoked trout? Yeah, a hot smoked, gold smoked and some fresh, uh, bigger ones we use in our own restaurant. The food basket. Everything we're going to catch today is in here. Eh? I'll close you up. Ah, thank you. And it won't open. So timing is important for a chef, right? Very important. Yeah, organization, organization. and yeah. being prepared and on time. Yeah, prepared for everything. The opposite of me. Ta -da. I spy a butcher. Does it feel like a sweet shop to you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It must be so yeah. exciting to see all this <laughs> food. <laughs> We spoke to the master butcher for about an hour. I learned about the concentrated flavors of dry aged beef and got to taste a few different free offerings. Okay. Backstage access. I can't understand what they're saying, but I think they're excited about this piece of meat. <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> the team picked a couple of pieces of meat for our meal tonight, including a slice of this dry aged beef, which looked and smelt incredible. Did the butchery visit go well? Yeah, it went very well. Look at that. Getting heavy. Yeah. <laughs> lunch time. Yeah. What pro chefs eat for lunch? Food equals energy and energy equals being able to make some more food. <laughs> and being happy. <laughs> and being happy. This place reminds me of Lord of the Rings, like Hobbit House kind of style building. 
That looks awesome. Sausage rolls. Yeah. Are they sausage rolls? No. We sat in the restaurant, ate lunch, and prepared for an afternoon of gathering ingredients from the woods and garden. So we're switching vehicles. We're going from the Land Rover to the golf cart. What? <laughs> Mushroom foraging in a golf cart. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Check. If a shaker, if a guy with the cold It might be a bit shaky, but I think it'll be fun. Okay, this is, this is gonna be a fun ride. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna fit? <laughs> it's a proper fit. So, yeah, this could be good. I mean, this all could be good. Can we take a little walk? <laughs> <laughs> we found some mushrooms. Uh. <laughs> but not every mushroom is edible. <laughs> we gotta find the right ones. Well, we can try. Yeah. Who's dying? Try and see, he's dying. No, this one's not the good. <laughs> Where are the edible mushrooms? What has he found? What has he found? Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah! Woo. Nice! Fresh. Edible mushrooms. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> yeah! Mushrooms in the basket. And beer is coming out the basket. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Winkles. What have we found? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst out in the woods, we stumbled across many different species of mushrooms and even found some edible Belitus mushrooms as well as a couple of impressive looking cauliflower fungus, both of which would be used in our cooking tonight. Another interesting find was the new growth tips of spruce trees and also pine cones, which apparently would be used to make a sweet syrup for the dessert. Golf cart mushrooming is definitely the best way to forage. You can just drive along until you spot something. Ta -da. Hello, hi. I thought you were stopping. <laughs> no, no. Well, good luck, Jessica. Ciao. <laughs> After that fun mushroom adventure, we are now in the restaurant's own garden. We're going to pick the final ingredients for our meal that we're going to cook up. Oh my that's goodness, the, that's what the is this? That's the that we were talking about before. Okay. <laughs> this is celeriac. It's another kind of celery. Okay. It's the same family as you can see from the, from the branches and the leaves. Yeah. But the, the fruit then it's different, it has a different shape. Yeah. That looks cool. Yeah, they are spicy and white in the middle. Really? What, what did you Complete. call them? Ramanas. Ramanas. Yeah. It's kind of a radish. Okay. Squeeze it a little and then... It smells like citrusy or... Yeah, yeah. It smells like a type of uh, candy. What is this called? Fervena. It smells like the... Lemon balls. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Lemon balls, yeah. Eat this. Garlic. <laughs> this is so much fun. Walking around do a you, garden do you know the... on my own is really boring, but when you're with like pro chefs and they can <laughs> they can tell you about things and show you the taste and smell of things, it's just so exciting. Wow. <laughs> Mushrooms from the forest, plants from the garden. Oh, we can make the barbecue the celery, uh, yeah. parsley oil. I'm excited to find out yeah. what they're gonna put together from all the food that we found. So flowers are very important for garnish. Yeah, really. This one, yeah, it's all edible. All these are edible flowers. After collecting herbs from the garden, we returned to the restaurant. Time to go into the kitchen. The first step for the team was to grab a pen and paper and have a brainstorm and formulate a plan for today's meal. I wanna know what you're thinking. <laughs> 
Well, we are thinking about the trout. We're gonna cook on a low temperature, 42 degrees steam. Um, then we put it back in the fridge and then you can get the skin nicely off the, off the fish and the fish is still fatty and uh, soft. Then the main course is the entrecot. Uh, we're gonna uh, bake it in the, in the butter and with some uh, garlic and uh, uh, rosemary. Then we have di different structures of uh, celeriac. And of course we are gonna use the mushrooms uh, we found today. And then the dessert will be a mousse made out of jasmine, uh, raspberry ice cream, a crumble made of white chocolate and raspberry. Um, we make a caramel sauce with the pine tree uh, tops we found. And we want to make a foam out of the pine tree tops. And if that's all finished, we have a Michelin worthy uh, menu, I think. <laughs> wow. All right, let's go for it. Everyone's getting into cooking mode. I can feel it. So we get all the uh, all the moisture out of the fish, mm -hmm. and it will be more uh, concentrated taste. And then we put it in the oven on steam, 42 degrees. So what are you prepping here? Sauce. Making the sauce. sauce. Yeah. Okay. With meat. Little uh, secret. Use vanilla. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that smells so good. It's very expensive. When the stems of the flower is fermented, you get the typical vanilla flavor. You have also fake vanilla. Eh? It comes from uh, animals. Beavers. It comes from beavers. Beavers? Yes, no, no joke. Wow. Sorry. But this is real vanilla. It's already a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. but Whoa! But I, we're gonna give them more flavors. That's like that's already good enough, guys. What? You don't need to do any more. And then we go for more and more and more. <laughs> that's not good enough. This is so fascinating to watch these guys busy at work. I very quickly lost track of the many combinations of ingredients and countless cooking techniques these guys were using, but watching these pros at work was one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. Mmm, the kitchen just smells so nice. That is some of the best tasting sauce I've ever put in my mouth. It's incredible. What is going on here? Is this like a batter? Or? Yeah, a batter. We are going to fry them oh. on the main course. Or is that sage? Yeah. I make a ravioli from these leaves and I fill it up with this. Get it cold. When I put it warm in the ravioli, mm -hmm. the green leaf is going to be brown. Oh, I see. There's no point in me describing it. I can't describe it well enough. You see, it's not thick enough. If the line is straight, it's, it's, um, it's staying still. Yes, okay. then it's just thick enough. But the taste, the taste goes to the moon. They're all busy at work in the kitchen. I feel like I'm just kind of getting in the way, <laughs> pointing my camera in their face and looking at what they're doing. For someone like me who is interested in food and likes eating food, it's so interesting watching professionals do their thing. And every now and then they give me a little taste of the sauce or part of the food. And it's just mind blowing how strong the flavors are and how intense everything tastes. I still don't know exactly what they're cooking up, so I'm really excited to, to see what they make from the ingredients that we found and lots of other things in their kitchen. This is a vinaigrette for the starter, mm -hmm. cucumber and citrus africa. What? <laughs> how, how do you guys do this with food? Try this. Maybe it's better if you sit down first. What even is that? <laughs> what? I'm in food heaven today. That's the meat we bought this morning from yes. the butcher. Oh. 
awesome. I feel very privileged right now. We sat here with some of the best chefs in the world. <laughs> and they have just cooked up this incredible... Wait, this is a three course meal, yeah. right? Yeah. This is only the start. Yeah. This is the starter. And we are eating the trout we catch uh, this morning with the different structures made out of uh, cucumber, avocado and miso. Uh, we finished it all with a vinaigrette made of uh, citrus africana and cucumber. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. I've never had trout, which is... It's like jelly <laughs> in my mouth, it just... It's, the texture is amazing. Yeah. Well done. Yay! Woo! Woo! First course. First Good course. Job. <laughs> Back in the kitchen for... Yeah. Yeah. Preparing the second course. The meat we get from the butcher uh, this morning. Uh, together with uh, the mushrooms we found, of course. Uh, some fried leaves, uh, celery egg we found in our own garden and uh, we make it uh, final with uh, jus made of timut paper. <laughs> Mr. Jus? Yes. Mr. Jus. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it would be beautiful. Yeah. Nice job guys. Second course, amazing. It's really hard to communicate through a camera the taste. All I can really say is amazing, incredible, crazy, delicious. But it doesn't really mean anything to you guys, I guess. It's so much more than those descriptive words that I'm using. It's, it's a lot more than that. But it's just hard to, hard to communicate taste through a camera. But honestly, it is... Some of the best food I've ever eaten. The texture, the taste, the smell of it all is just really, really good. Anyway, we have one last course. This is the pine cone. Yeah, this is the pine cone uh, yeah. vinaigrette. We have a yogurt mousse with jasmine flour. Uh, raspberry gel and fresh uh, raspberry, uh, raspberry sorbet, white chocolate and then uh, the foam made out of the pine cone, the pine tree tops and the vinaigrette. That's the dessert. That's sweet. <laughs> wow, this is like magic. <laughs> That's insane. We do it everybody together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice job everyone. When I left England nearly two months ago, I did not expect it to go how it went. These have been some of the best weeks of my life. I have met some of the best people I've ever met and it's been one incredible adventure. And I want to thank everyone that I've met along the way for making this trip such a special one. It really has been wild and I'm sad to say that I'm going back to England in a couple of days. I would like to keep going on this road trip and uh, keep exploring, keep meeting more people. However amazing it is, I need to go back to England to see friends and family because they are also very important too. But I'm pretty sure I'll be on another adventure soon. So thanks so much for watching this road trip journey. Uh, I appreciate everyone who has left nice comments and support. Uh, it's amazing. Thank you. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. And we're on the train back to England. <laughs> <laughs>